YouTube. Otherwise, I get feedback myself. All right. Hello, everybody. This is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Welcome to this Fellowship Friday. Oops, it's Saturday. How did that happen? <laughs> All right. Hello, everybody. We weren't able to do it last night, but uh, I noticed that Sister Renee did a, 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 a live streaming program with Brother Dave. It was wonderful. Everybody loved it. And I think that uh, Dave contacted me today and wanted to do some more. And a lot of people probably would like to do something on Saturday night. So we're here, even though it's not Friday, let's call it Fellowship Saturday. And uh, I'm posting the link publicly. Uh, you don't have to be a, a, a little select group of people to join the panel. Uh, anybody can join, provided you agree with the statement of faith of this congregation that Jesus is eternal God Almighty. Jesus is not merely a great man or a prophet. He's God himself. God manifest in the flesh as the Son of God. And we ask that you agree that salvation is not a reward for good behavior. You don't work to earn your salvation. You receive it as a free gift by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Faith in his finished work on the cross and his promise of eternal life to you. And we ask that you agree that uh, when we do get this gift of eternal life, that it's guaranteed, it's irrevocable. We cannot lose our salvation for any reason. Now, there's a hundred other theological subjects we, we often discuss. None of those other subjects rise to the level of importance of these three. So we say, let's unite around these three core doctrines. All other subjects, uh, we all have liberty. We don't have to agree. When we don't agree, actually, I find that to be quite interesting. I love to find when people disagree on me, put me on something. And, okay, good. Let me hear your point of view. I might be wrong. I hope that's the attitude everybody will adopt. Uh, okay. So that's the that's what we're going to be doing, and we don't have a particular subject tonight. But let's get just let everybody say hi, uh, introduce themselves. Just take one minute, tell the viewers who you are and what your channel does on YouTube. Let's start with Sister Renee, our untwisted sister. Ah, you guys are funny. <laughs> hey guys, it's good to see you again hey. tonight. We're I'm I'm glad we're having uh, so many live streams. It's unfortunate this is going to be taken from us on august 1st but brother luke's got something in the works so that we can continue wait, with the about, church of the eternal wait, what about august 1st they're stopping google hangouts accessible for live stream on youtube can we do um, normal live streams we go to another yes place? we're going to figure that out but uh anyway it's good to see you guys thanks for coming to the live stream last night i was i had no idea what i was doing and uh matthias uh called me and walked me through it so i appreciate that good to see you guys all right that's that's our sister renee renee roland is her channel the untwisted sister because if you're troubled by verses in the bible that confuse you and make you question whether faith alone in christ alone is enough then uh, go to her channel. That's her specialty is explaining these verses. Okay. Uh, next, uh, we're going with ladies. Ladies first. Let's go with Sister Paula, uh, Bible literalist. Go ahead, Sister. Hello. Thanks for inviting me. Um, my channel is Bible Literalist, and I've got close to 500 videos now, mostly almost all Bible videos. I do some cosmology videos and DIY. Um, I have a website words of a feather um, and a Bible study site or the Greek interlinear and things like that. All right. Thank you. Uh, now I've seen sister Paula on your Bible literalist in the chat room now for quite some time, but I got my first opportunity to really meet her and get to know her. She uh, contacted me and volunteered to help us try to figure out how to keep these, uh, live group discussions going uh, after August 1st. Matthias has a system and uh, uh, Sister Paula has a, a system. So we're going to be able, okay, we're going to work it out and uh, one way or the other. Okay, so uh, next uh, we got, uh, oh, uh, looks like uh, Brother Dave uh, left. He'll, I'm sure he'll come back. Let's ask Frank. Frank in the Netherlands, say hi. Hello, everyone. I'm Frank. I'm uh, from the Netherlands. I came to the understanding of Jesus a few years back, but I was a work-based gospelist. 
And since uh, shortly, I have made a challenge, uh, channel on YouTube about the deeper insights of the gospel and why and how it should be according to his perfection onto us so we can bring nothing back to him when it comes to salvation. Why and how is much more important so that the gospel can be better understood. And I will also take Bible verses, not its addresses, but as far as I know and remember, I can use them for the audience so that they understand grace much better. All right, okay. uh, thank you very much. And uh, we have uh, also Cody. Cody, you want to say hi, everybody? And tell me anything about your channel? Hi, I'm Brian Cody. And I don't really have a YouTube channel, but all I can say is I'm ready for church camp tomorrow. <laughs> all right, very good. We're, we're very happy to have you with us. And uh, uh, anytime you feel like piping up and just saying your piece, just uh, get our attention, okay? All right, now uh, we have uh, Brother Dave. You uh, left and came back. Uh, everything technically correct now? No, I guess not. <laughs> I bet you he's not on Google Chrome. I bet you he's having audio issues. Well, here's something else. I wanted to make an announcement about Dave. If he, when he does come back, I want to say something that uh, maybe someone can give, give him a helping hand here. Um, all right. Now, we don't really have any agenda tonight. Um, okay, let's see if Brother Dave's work. Dave, are you uh, functioning now? Yeah, I'm functioning. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, I wanted you to take just a minute, uh, say hi to everybody, uh, introduce your channel to the audience, please. Yeah, I just want to uh, say thanks for having me tonight. Thanks for everybody for being here. Um, like Renee was saying, it's it's a good thing that we take advantage of these uh, fellowships while we can until YouTube cuts out that capability, but hopefully we'll find a way around it. Um, I have a YouTube channel just simply under Brother Dave where I just like to help people understand the word, uh, understand scriptures, understand who they are in Christ, uh, the simplicity of the gospel, and the sufficiency of who Christ is and what Christ is, finish at the cross. And I like to help people grow in grace and move forward in their in their Christian walk without all the confusion and all the condemnation. And a worthy mission you have there. And uh, you do it very well. Matter of fact, I haven't known you that long. Probably about a month ago, I, I noticed your videos. I started watching them and I was blown away thinking that I was so impressed with your preaching. I started talking about you. And uh, the, my friends who have gone to your channel have been equally impressed. Uh, you're certainly uh, not an introvert, are you? You're, 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 uh, you don't have to uh, be pro. <laughs> no, I mean, life. it's it's a balance. It's a balance. There's times where, you know, I like to be introverted. Um, I like to be, you know, by myself and study or just to relax. But then there's times where, you know, I get that motor rolling and I got to get out there and, and be amongst the people. And so I kind of try to have a balance. Yeah. You know, it's I, interesting. Uh, it's interesting you said that because I took a uh, I took one of those online tests one time and it said that I was it said that I was 51 percent extrovert and 49 percent introvert <laughs> well that is interesting well i think it is good to have that kind of balance uh, and uh, in any given conversation you might see me transverse back and forth from teaching to preaching and mostly the difference between teaching and preaching is uh, preaching has more passion and maybe more conviction uh and teaching doesn't necessarily have those components but uh yeah you're doing a great job preaching the gospel Okay, I think everybody's had a chance to say hi now. Now, I said that we didn't have an agenda tonight, but any subject anybody wants to bring up, we can talk about it. But first, let me say to the chat room, hello, everybody in the chat room. Blessings to all of you. There are one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, uh, this, the capacity for this is 10. So four more people can join if you feel like it. Uh, I'm posting the link in the chat room. Go click on that. If you would like to join the conversation or just stay in the chat room and participate in that way if you like uh, now uh, mainly uh, 
we want to have fellowship and and and, and praise Jesus to, tonight. But uh, if anybody has any question or any uh, subject that you want to bring to the the, the group, uh, go ahead and say it now, please. Brother Luke, I'll be right back. I'm having an issue with my phone for some reason. Hangouts keeps kicking me out. I'll be right back. Okay. All right. That reminds me. <laughs> I'll wait till he gets back. No, actually, let me say it now, so because I don't have to I'm going to embarrass him then. But I was talking to Brother Dave earlier today, and I learned from him that um, he has a cell phone, but he does not have a computer. Uh, he used to have a. Oh, there's Brother Mark. Hi, Brother Mark. Hey, Mark. Okay. Mark, we'll let you introduce yourself in just a second here. But um, so I learned from Brother Dave today that he has a, a, a smartphone and um, and he's using that for this program. And I told him about the problem with smartphones and streaming. Uh, back in April, they made a declaration about that kind of use because people were using mobile uh, uh, phones to live stream terrorist events. So a terrorist could turn on their phone and do a live stream of their terrorist act. So back in mm -hmm. April, there was a problem with people who lost the ability to do streaming unless they had a computer or a laptop. Um, unless they have a thousand subscribers, I don't know exactly all the parameters, but they made a change back in April. And now they're making another change that's gonna, uh, so you're gonna have to have a computer or a laptop, I think at least, um, Ray, Brother Dave had some financial problems uh, not long ago, and he had to sell his computer. I'm not asking anybody to send him money for a computer, but I, I, this computer that I'm using here, um, Brother Benjamin Ramp has helped me with technical issues for many years. And one time I was having technical problems, and he said, you just need another computer. So he sent me this laptop. Uh, it was used, but it's, I've been using it for years. It works great. So. If anybody has a, um, uh, let's say, a used uh, desktop or laptop that, that would serve this purpose, contact Brother Dave and uh, send it to him if, if, you, uh, if you're able. Okay? Um, okay, other than that, let me ask, uh, let me start with uh, Sister Paula. Um, uh, you, do you have any praise reports, Sister, or any uh, news or any subject that you want to bring to our attention? Well, I have a partial praise report. Um, there was an unspoken request that I mentioned, and part of it has been resolved. So we're happy about that. Um, on the other hand, a friend of ours in our server passed away. Um, so we're, you know, having mixed feelings about all that. But um, other than that, can't complain. Um, been very blessed. So as for topics, um, I am any topic is good with me, so <laughs> no problem. All right, uh, very. I know that um, you, you didn't tell me all the details, but uh, you told me about uh, someone had was in some kind of a crisis, and I was praying for them, and I'm glad that things are getting better. But I will tell you, uh, last night uh, during your live stream, uh, Renee. Um, I was listening to it, and then at the same time, I was playing backgammon with my wife, and we're at the kitchen table, and our whole house started moving like we're a, on a, a boat in in the storm, like in uh, when Jesus was on the in the boat on the storm. Our whole house was moving like the ocean waves were moving our house, and uh, it lasted about five seconds. It, Nothing fell apart. I don't know how the house even held together completely, but that's what happened last night. But there was a, a um, hurricane, I'm not, a, a, an earthquake in California, and here we are 300 miles away, and in Las Vegas, we had that kind of an impact. So, uh, oh, that, you had a bad aftershock out there, Luke? No, this was um, this was the earthquake at the same time they had it in California, the 7th oh. It just, it was so powerful, it stretched from California all the way, it was, we felt it in Las Vegas. It wasn't an aftershock. Now, my friend in Bakersfield, that's what, about three hours from you, isn't it? Yes. She said she felt it pretty bad, too. Yes, yes, okay. All right, so, uh, Brother Dave, while you were gone, I asked people to send you a computer. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I'll tell you what, if, 
Yeah, I had to get I had to get rid of my laptop a little while ago. Um, but if I get another one, I'll be more than happy to uh, have Matthias walk me through uh, different programs and to uh, learn how to go live, so I can have people come on my channel, like have a panel like you guys do. Like my channel could be another outlet for people to come, or I can help you know run programs, whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So uh, uh, I just let everybody know that. Uh, you had to sell your computer, and if someone has an extra computer, to send it to you. So someone may be contacting you about that, hopefully. Uh, okay. Um, now, I was asking, I asked Sister Paula if there's any subject or topic that she wanted to bring up, and she didn't. So let me ask you next, Brother Dave, what, what subject would you like to, to, to bring up for us? Well, there seems to be a lot of... Um there seems to be a lot of discrepancy or a lot of confusion on Revelation chapter 3. I think that'd be a good chapter to go through uh, if we have time sometime tonight. Or All right, well, I didn't want to do a verse-by-verse -verse, uh, Bible study tonight. Uh, but no, I mean, or we can not to, no, we don't have to do a Bible study, but I mean, if, if we can just throw around some ideas to help clarify, because there's a lot of confusion and you know, Sister Renee, she's really, really excellent at explaining that, and I don't understand why people can you, don't. Uh, can you put it in the form of a question for us right now? Uh, sensitize it down to a simple question. All right, let's see. Um, how would I word it? Okay, let's do it like this. What does Jesus mean when he says, I will spew thee out of my mouth? Okay, uh, Renee, he mentioned your name. He, he has confidence in you, so maybe you should go first. Uh, yeah, well, we, we were talking last night. The First of all, we, we got to remember, and Frank, I didn't forget. I'll answer your question. Hey, Mark. I see Scooby up there. Hi. Hey. I hope you're doing well. I am. Thank you. I'm so grateful. My that nerve, that bones off my nerve. I'm able to walk. It's just wow. It's great. Um, but we were talking <laughs> yesterday how uh, the Book of Revelation, the beginning of it, is written to seven literal first-century churches. Uh, many people use them as allegories for the modern churches, usually Laodicean church. But many churches in the world would can fall into any of those seven categories. So if you want to spiritualize revelation and try to apply it to the modern day, you can, but it's written in old Testament symbology, apocalyptic symbology that you find in Daniel and Zechariah. So unfortunately, most people don't let the Bible interpret itself, but uh, revelation three clearly interprets itself. It says that, uh, the uh, he's talking to the angel of the church, which is the pastor, the messenger of the church, the leader, and he warns them uh, that uh, the spewing out of their mouth, uh, out of his mouth, is not a believer losing salvation. It's it's him saying, "I'm going to take away the church from the leader, um, and not use that." group any longer for his service for his purposes it has nothing to do with um anybody's salvific loss or salvation at all um i've often thought that lukewarm like uh dave was saying before you know when you're hot you know what you need you need something cold when you're cold you need something to warm you up and these people were just resting in their wealth and i also believe that uh, he'd rather you be saved or lost, but don't sit in the middle thinking you're saved and you're not. You either believe he accomplished it, because I always felt like the lukewarm was, well, they don't deny what Jesus did, but they don't give them all the credit either. And so it's kind of, to me, that's the lukewarm. Um, and that that's what seems to make most sense. But uh, it certainly is not about salvific loss at all. He'll never leave you or forsake you. He never spit one of his children out of his mouth. Amen. <laughs> He's talking about um, not using them for his purpose. And you can, you can see that clearly. And it was a literal church. 
people are spiritualizing this and saying, if you're lukewarm, Jesus is going to spit you out of his mouth. He's not even talking to you. We're talking to a church that existed 2,000 years ago. You know, we've got to, you know, people, all scripture is profitable, but, but it, you know, and it does have layers like a literal meaning in a specific context of to whom he's speaking. And you can take what he's saying to them and spiritualize it and use it for today if you want to. But it, if you just take it at its face value, he's speaking to a church that doesn't even lo no longer exist at this point. Um, so, no, it has nothing to do with losing. Right. right. And, if, and just to touch on what you were saying, uh, Sis Renee, they, if they look in Revelation chapter 1, verses 19 through 20, it tells you exactly that the angels are the leaders of the church, what we would call today the pastor or the bishop. Right. And it says that the candlesticks or the lampstands are the churches themselves. Yep. Uh, Jesus made, you know, Jesus made the promise to all believers: "Whosoever believeth on me has everlasting life. Whosoever right. comes to me, I will in no wise cast out." Jesus right. is not, uh, you know, schizophrenic. And so, right. when he's saying "spew them out," I believe he's saying there the church in itself, the effectiveness of that place, is not going to be useful. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. And when it says, I will take away your candlestick, and it tells you the candlestick is the church, what is he going to take away? He's going to take away the church from the leader. That, that's all it's threatening to do. All right, let me, uh, I've got a lot of things I want to add up to this, but I, I want to ask uh, Sister Paula, uh, to, uh, you turn your camera on, and I think maybe that indicates you had something to say about this. What are your thoughts? <laughs> Yeah, you picked up on that. I, I was happy you did. Um, yeah, I have a little bit, just an interesting thing on the Greek there. Uh, the you is singular. Since you are neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. It is singular. And that, to me, is a clear indication that this is a um, an address to the entire congregation, um, not to uh, individual salvation. Therefore, it is the loss of a church from its place rather than anything to do with salvation. Um, and because it couldn't contradict the rest of scripture anyway. So this is about congregations. And I, I have a different perspective on who the angels are. The, uh, the, mess, the word is messenger, Ang angelos means messenger. And in my opinion, it is simply the messengers who would take the letters to the churches because um, in scripture, we see that there are groups of elders that run a church and not a single single person. So I lean toward that being uh, literally messengers. But the, I think the impor important thing that this is not about individual salvation because it is a singular you, meaning the group. So that, that's all I wanted to add about that. See, yeah. I didn't even know that. And all three of us, reading it because we have the same teacher the holy spirit came to the similar conclusion mm -hmm. and you know i just wanted to add one thing I, I really really um want people to notice uh in revelation 3 before jesus even gets to that point he says that all who overcome he will not blot out their name from the book of mm -hmm. life well there's only if you look in the entire bible there's only one passage that speaks of what overcoming means. People think it means to become sinless or to become uh, perfectly obedient or no. It's in 1 John 5, 4 and 5, and it says, they who overcome are they who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Who is he that overcomes but he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God? That's it. Mm -hmm. I, another mm -hmm. angle, possibly, I hope I'm not talking over anybody. Um is that overcoming in all of those letters has to do with overcoming the problem that the congregation was facing that Jesus was bringing out to them that they needed to overcome that. Oh, and you can't use context. Uh, That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let me let me put in my. I'm going to put in three cents instead of two. Uh, I was going to say, and Renee beat me to it, but I, I think it's important, at least it's my conclusion, I'm going to be very slow to form my doctrine from the book of Revelation. 
It's not that I don't believe the Bob it belongs in the Bible. I do. <laughs> it's inspired, but um, uh, it is written in a style of writing that's called uh, apocryphal. It was a style of writing that was um, popular a couple of centuries before the first century in BC. And it was commonly used. It's very illustrative and, and symbolic, and that's the style. And because of that, it's meant to be uh, symbolic and, and make pictures of things, present ideas and pictures. And uh, for that reason, it's very easy to come to wrong conclusions. But I, I, what I worry about is I've met a lot of people who uh, become dogmatic on the book of Revelation. And they think they got it figured out. In fact, they're, they're absolutely certain they got it figured out. Well, uh, you've heard me say this before. For 25 years, I've held a particular position. It was the dispensational futurism uh, interpretation of eschatology popularized by John Nelson Darby, the Schofield Reference Bible, and the co most popular common viewpoint in America today about end times. Uh, I learned it very well. I taught it, defended it, uh, and then I started st listening to the other sides of all these positions, and, and uh, my mind was swayed in some ways on eschatology. I won't go into everything that I've uh, changed my mind about in that subject, but I will say that I probably have studied the book of Revelation as much as anybody here or anybody you know. Um, but you'd think that would give me more confidence, wouldn't you? It's given me less confidence because what I've done is I've gone through the book of Revelation one verse at a time, listening to the expert preterist teaching on, on each verse. Then I went through the whole book of Revelation one verse at a time, listening to the expert historicist interpretation of the viewpoint. I already knew the interpretation of the, the expert futurist of viewpoint. So I was able to consider all three of these most popular interpretations. And I found that uh, all the experts were convincing. And as I was listening to one, I was getting swayed each time to that viewpoint. And so I, my conclusion is there's, pro I don't think everybody has it all right. And probably not everybody has it all wrong. I'm not confident. Now, we got to go back to this question of, well, how do you form your, your doctrines and your conclusions then? Well, there are a lot of verses in the Bible that are very simple, concise, clear, and explicit. Those are the verses that we need to uh, uh, trust because they're easy to understand. They're, they're, not, they're not ambiguous. Not everybody's arguing uh, over the meanings of them. And we have a lot of verses, hundreds of verses that, that, that uh, state our, uh, our core doctrines simply, explicitly, and repeatedly. Um, so uh, I would be slow to form doctrines. Now, this idea of hot, cold, and lukewarm, I will say one thing about that. Um, most, uh, I used to think that hot and cold and lukewarm meant that if you're hot, it means you're a passionate Christian. You're out there working really hard. We're all, we're all lukewarm. We're on fire, especially Brother Dave. We're on fire for the Lord, so we're not cold or lukewarm. We're hot, passionate for Jesus, and passionate in our good works. Uh, and then cold means that you just, you, uh, you, you reject it entirely. And lukewarm is you're kind of half in and half out, as Renee said. Uh, but I don't think that hot should be interpreted as good and cold bad necessarily either, because at that time, it was, it was understood that there was a a place to drink water, uh, some kind of a river or stream or sort of water source at that place in time that they, well, the water was lukewarm and uh, they th thought it was disgusting. Just think of it right now. If you want to get up and get something to drink right now, would you like to have your drink cold with ice cubes or would you like to have it hot like coffee or tea or would you like to have it lukewarm? Um, so I would say that we could think that hot and cold are both good. It's just the lukewarm that's the problem. Okay, there's, there's you go. Uh, any reaction to any of that? I drink lukewarm. Yeah, you're always been a troublemaker. Yeah, I know. It's uh, easier to digest. You would, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> We've always got a, a dissenter in the group. 
Okay. No, 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 I'm a dissenter. I'm a dissenter. Uh, uh, I'm off center. <laughs> all right. But, uh, to me, the mo I guess the most important thing is uh, I, I, I think it's unfortunate that if you are going to be dogmatic about your eschatology and your uh, interpretation of Revelation, um, uh, I, I think it's a mistake. But that means you have a lot of confidence. Dogma, dogma means you're absolutely certain this is correct and you better agree with me or else. That's how I am about the deed of Christ, faith alone for salvation and eternal security. We're dogmatists about that. But when it comes to the revelation and understanding that, I don't think it's wise to be dogmatic about it. Hey, Brother Luke. Yeah. I want to add to that and just say, do not base your theological doctrine or your soteriology or your eternal security on an apocalyptic Old Testament symbology prophetic book. It's not, it's when, when you've got hundreds of plain scriptures that clarify something for you, don't look into a place that is open, like Luke said, to interpretation um, and uh, uh, base your foundation on that. I, I don't think any of us should do that. Yeah, amen. Okay, anybody wants to respond to anything that I said or, or Inbell said, any, any uh, mm -hmm. rebuttals? I, I would just add that I think especially for prophecy, the good the a good approach is to treat it like a jigsaw puzzle where you look for the corners and edges first, right? You look for the things that are statements of finality that um, tell you the limits within which you can interpret and then try to put sections together. And I don't think, I agree that I don't think anybody has all the whole puzzle. I think that it will be known to those to whom it applies and that um, either these things were told to us to study for reasons we aren't fully aware of. It says at the end of Revelation, uh, I, I think at the end and the beginning, if I recall, a blessing on anyone who studies it. So even if we can't understand it all, and we probably won't, that there is something good about studying it. And almost a third of the Bible is prophecy. So I think it's pretty important as a general subject, and I, I would call it the fingerprint of God on the scriptures because it's what one of the things that makes the Bible unique is its prophecy 100% fulfilled. So I think it's really important. <laughs> I would be so bold as to say it's more than a third, but that's just me. I think the whole Bible is prophecy, depending upon where you are in time. When atheists ask me why I believe in a book, that's the exact reason I give them. I say because only God knows the future. I'm not talking vague Nostradamus, fill in the blanks after it's already been said. I'm saying specific dates, times, and everything, and only God knows the future, so I know it is a supernatural book. I'm glad. Yep. 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 It's a, I always give that verse, of the, I forget the exact reference in the Old Testament, I am God and there is no other, I am God and there is none like me. I declare the end from the beginning, from ancient times, what is still to come. And that, that's what he's calling his signature on the scriptures. So I, I think it's a really intriguing and important subject. And I, I, it's a shame that so many Christians avoid it. And it's also, he, he, all, he often gives future prophecies in past tense. Yeah. I love that because it's like it's going to happen. I said it will, and it will. And so it's speaking in past tense as if it's already occurred. Yeah, I have a playlist. Uh, I have certain playlists that are really would be under the umbrella of apologetics, uh, our attempt to prove our 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 beliefs as apologetics. And one playlist is science, God, and the Bible. Another one is. Uh, prophecies proving the Bible. And there's another one I forgot, but uh, the prophecies in the Bible, uh, I didn't become a believer because of the prophecies because I wasn't even aware of it. I didn't know enough to even know that all these prophecies were the signs, the proof that, to, to give us confidence. Um, but of course, a few couple of years after I was born again, and had been studying for a while, I learned that there's hundreds of prophecies that have been fulfilled that are clear, and it, it's in, it should be indisputable that God has told us in great detail what the future would be, and it's come to pass. Mm -hmm. so I, 
all, all of the prophecies that have been fulfilled can be very powerful evidences in not only to persuade someone who's not a believer, but to reinforce uh, our own faith. Um, but then much of, of Revelation, some would say all, uh, is yet to be fulfilled. So if it's not been fulfilled, then we can't really have that kind of confidence that we really know because it hasn't been fulfilled yet. So how do you know well, the ones that have been fulfilled are it's, it's obvious to us now in hindsight. Well, it's kind of what they're for. When you see these things come to pass, realize that I am he. <clears throat> Amen. <clears throat> and just so everybody knows, we got into it today over this. Uh, we were going through Revelation. Plenty of times we said these are our personal interpretations. If you disagree, that's okay. Let's just get along. And lo and behold, somebody gets upset, storms out, starts kicking people, throws the biggest temper tantrum, and it's like, guy, we told you these are our personal interpretations. Why are brother at each other's throats? <laughs> that's funny. Hey, um, Frank had asked a question, and since he's talking about prophecy, I'm going to answer him real quick. He asked last night, he said he asked, and we didn't see it in the chat, Brother Dave. He uh, asked something about why did Jesus uh, turn the tables over or something? Is that what you asked, Frank? Yeah, that was uh, what I asked. He, because uh, I felt a little bit uh, as if the enemy tried to accuse Jesus about using violence of some kind. No, so, it, it's actually a fulfillment of an Old Testament prophecy in the book of Psalms. Mm -hmm. um, it's just Whoa, another, okay. It's yeah. another confirmation. It's in Psalm sixty nine nine. Let me let me type it out. It says, "For the zeal of thine house has eaten me up, and the reproaches of them that reproach thee are fallen upon me." So he was um, furious that they would you turn his father's house to make themselves rich, and. Uh, so the zeal of God's house had eaten him up. It was righteous anger. And you notice it didn't say he didn't strike anyone. He didn't no, hit. No, he drove them out. No, he didn't hit anybody. So there was no violence. But no. That, was a, that was a prophetic scripture that he was fulfilling when he did that. Yep. Oh, I so often misunderstood that uh, concept. So it makes sense to me now. Uh, which uh, psalm was it? So psalm, I can't it down. psalm 69, 9. Psalm 69, verse 9. Okay. okay. That's it. Sorry about that, guys. Mm, it's okay. Um, I'm getting kicked out a lot, so let me just go ahead and do what I'm going to do. I want to praise the Lord. Okay, you're falling apart. Here, you, honey, you got to go on Google Chrome because Google Hangouts won't work on any other program. It always makes the audio stuff fall out. I want to hear <laughs> what he said. I want to hear what he was praising for. Oh, little. I know that we talked about this in the chat room on uh, Ring Central meetings. So uh, we talked this out before. <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. See what I mean? Um, I want to praise the Lord for all the help that he's given us um, and continues to give us. Um, the, I, I am completely overwhelmed with the outpouring of love from the congregation and from these people who I've set up nights with them. I've helped them through their problem. I did that because I love them, never expecting for it to turn back around on me. Um, the Lord works in the most unique and mysterious of ways. So if you have the chance, people, give of your time, give of yourself, give whatever you can without want to others and watch the Lord work. Amen to that. I can testify and I can yep. verify that. Amen. That's the truth. I'm glad to hear that, Mark. 
<laughs> now, I'll tell you, uh, since nobody's bringing up a new subject yet, R Renee, before, uh, while I was waiting for this program to get started today, I was just killing a little bit of time. I usually spend a lot of time uh, watching YouTube videos, and I found a few channels that like to make videos against Renee Rowland and Sin City Preacher and some of our other co-workers. And there's a lot yeah. of videos out there against us. And uh, I, I, but at least, I mean, some people can be very, very hateful. I'm not just saying that they're saying that we're heretics and we're, we're going to hell. Mm -hmm. uh, but the way that they say it is just nasty and mean and full of hate, you know. But uh, then there's some that they're very, seem to be quite loving and concerned and they're gentle about it, but they're still labeling us as, as heretics. So, uh, there's a lot. There's a lot out there. Uh, I remember when they, the furry first person that made a video against me years ago. Actually, <laughs> it, was, it was one of the very worst videos they've ever made to me. They, they did, uh, they're really good at a video um, uh, production. Uh, they have a lot of skill at that. And they were able to turn me into like a monster and my voice really scary. And, uh, and then uh, uh, it was uh, really, really dishonest of course the, the way that they were representing me and taking not you know if you take one sentence out of context it's bad enough but mm. have you ever had someone take a half of a sentence out of context oh they're, that's funny yes. they're not even willing to say the entire sentence they have to just cut the sentence in half and take it out of context to misrepresent what you say that's so, so dishonest. I, guess, uh, I guess my question is to everybody and my warning to everybody if you're not experienced with this yet is that um uh, how do we deal with these these people these that, that hate us and that can make the videos against us i there was a, a youtuber that i really loved very much it was called called stand for your stand for the faith a wonderful uh, woman a sister and she was a really good teacher and uh and she was un, became under attack because if you're for grace alone, faith alone, and Christ alone, and internal security, you're going to get attacked for that. That's all you got to do. Forget about all the other possible eschatology and and uh, eternal torment and Bible translation controversies that everybody mm -hmm. wants to discuss. <laughs> Those are all good to discuss and uh, try to work it all out together. But people get dogmatic on all those things too. But if if you do anything the way they like it, but you, you you say that that works are not required to get saved, works are not required to keep your salvation, works are not required to even prove that you are truly saved, uh, you're going to have people coming against you, and you're a heretic. And um, I've had friends leave YouTube because they could not cope with the attacks. So I I've made videos on this about how I tried to deal with it and, and my advice, but let's get everybody's reactions. Have you been under attack? How do you think we should be dealing with these attacks? <laughs> Luke, you know, I've had people get into my personal life, like try to personally hurt me, keep me from getting <clears throat> medical care that I need. <clears throat> I mean, I've had people do above and beyond just slandering me and uh, I, I, I had one lady that like, stopped me for four years. The, the hate mail started the first week I had the channel, and she's not stopped since. And uh, when they did the campaign to help me raise the money for the my upper teeth to get the bone grafts, she had them shut it down, told them I was a fraud and a scam artist, cut videos of me together to say that I lie. I'm not really disabled. I didn't really have MRSA. Look, a third of my arm's gone, but I didn't really have MRSA. She doesn't even know me. How, how would she know if I had it or not? She just calls me a liar. She does anything I anything she can do to hurt me, she does, and she's done it for years. And so if anybody speaks against me, she automatically joins in with their crowd. And she, she contacted me earlier and said she had a vision, and Jesus told her that she had to repent of her sin of smoking or she was going to go to hell. And I said, Jesus showed up and told you, you better work harder and rely on your own righteousness for salvation, that's, you better test that spirit. And also, that's the thing that Jesus wants to show oh, yeah. So, so uh, uh -huh. I met that person, but besides that, I get a new video a week um, of people editing me. Brother Luke, you said they did that. Yeah, they put fire behind me. 
they re- make my eyes roll back. They slow it down so it looks like my eyes are roll like I'm demon possessed. They oh, wow. edit my words together. I, I don't even care because all I know is that God has used videos against me to get people to my channel and they've gotten saved. It's funny. I've had many people say it's they funny. came here because somebody spoke evil against me and they heard the gospel. So if it can be used for good, I leave it. It's, I just leave it. It's funny how they never liked the video. They don't. They, they never showed the origin. They just so you with your eyes. Open. I know. I know. <laughs> well, you are really smoking, are you? <laughs> They've said evil things about my son. I've had another guy harass me while I, right before I went to the hospital. I told him I was really sick. Please stop texting me through the Facebook, and he wouldn't stop. It was just evil. I mean, it, I, I these are people claiming Christ, and that's what was most shocking about it. You know, I don't have any problem from other religions or even unbelievers. They might come in and make a snide remark, but they don't hunt me down and stalk me and try to destroy me. The best way I do is I, I just give it to God. That, that's all I can do. And I don't bother too often, like, defending myself. If somebody says I did, like, made satanic hand signs, I make jokes about it. It's silly to me. Uh, you can stop anybody that talks with their hands and, and say, look, she made a hand signal. She's a Satan. Or I'm a Satanist. Oh, wow. Well, how did you go with that? It's just silly. I don't even bother answering it. Jesus didn't answer his accusers. And and, and if I haven't done those things, I, I don't feel like I need to even do it. Let, they me, uh, let me go down the rows here and, and see uh, if anybody else has had to deal with this at all. Uh, Sister Paula, have you had any attacks against you for your easy believism? Yeah. <laughs> Mostly it's from other conspiracy theorists who just can't stand Christians. Um, I've had half a dozen hit pieces done on me, snippets of my, of things I've either said or written in text, um, you know, pieced together and screenshots and, and I just don't respond. I don't acknowledge them because what they want is a response. And people who know me know that the things are not true. And so it would actually be counterproductive if I tried to clear my own name rather than let other people do it for me. So, yeah, I, I agree that that's the thing to do is not to respond. Um, the only the problems I get, um, I don't want to get in too much hot water here from Christians, are over Bible versions and pre-trib rapture. Um, there's somebody in one of the other chats who continually jumps down my throat claiming to be a Christian because I believe Jesus comes sooner than he does. Uh, you know, I, I'm a Jesuit stooge because of that so it goes with the territory but you can't give them your energy that's that's the thing yeah the uh the thing i do not want to um fall prey to um judging their salvation based upon how hateful they they are because it seems like some of them were actually evil Uh, the depths that they will go to 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 try to hurt uh, 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 any of us uh, is uh, it's pretty amazing how far that they're willing to go, uh, and uh, I think that it's actually evil. And yet, I know that um, a real believer, uh, I, I cannot judge their salvation based upon how how much they've changed their life if they if they have still have bad behavior like that. So uh, should we, uh, can you come to any conclusions about whether someone's really even saved if, if they're doing, if they're working so hard against this gospel and, and, and coming against the gospel preachers, let's call it the, the free grace uh, preachers, uh, they hate uh, coming against you for that. Actually, some of them, let's say that they actually agree with our gospel, but they, uh, they disagree with us on something that we would call a minor difference that we should be able to tolerate but they they're going to expose you for that and they they do it in in an evil hateful way would you could you come to any conclusions about their salvation based upon the way they're behaving well you mean they 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 claim to be christ alone but like something like when i got attacked for being a woman and wouldn't stop preaching so they went after me for the eternal sonship kind of thing yeah i can't judge those people's (laughs) salvation i I, I'm not here to judge anybody's salvation. Uh, 
and I and I'm not gonna go after them back either. A lot of times people get upset because uh, one gentleman asked me. He goes, "Well, I did my video against her, so I can't wait till she comes back at me." And I never did it. I never mentioned him. I never responded. I and it it made him really angry. And then there came worse things. But I just feel like it's. My, my thing, my, I have to stay focused because for me, Satan works through people, whether saved or not, to yeah. divert us from our purpose. And my purpose to serve the Lord is to get people saved, to tell them the good news, and to lift up my brothers and sisters in Christ. That That's what my calling is, and that's what I need to stick to. I can't make it about me. Has anybody had any experience using the verse in the Bible where Paul tells us, I'm paraphrasing, when people do evil things against you, don't return evil for evil, but instead be kind to them yep. and pouring, pouring coals on their head. I believe that means they, you, they'll feel ashamed of themselves when they see you don't respond like they do. Uh, and I, I've had a lot of experience using that. And uh, some people have repented. They say, oh, I am. Brother Luke, can you turn your uh, volume up a little bit? Turn my volume up? Well, uh, no, I'll just uh, put the microphone. Closed. How's that? Is that any better? A little bit, yeah. Okay. I could try to turn the volume up, I guess. Is anybody else having a problem hearing me? No, you're good. No. Yeah. No, no. It's okay. All right, then. Uh, okay, but so the burning cut holes and their uh, coals on their head by the way that we respond, Have has anybody used that successfully? No. No. <laughs> I, I have had people <laughs> come the even the gospel. I've, I've had people um, that they came like they came the channel and they were lordship and they said some mean things to me and i i stayed kind and i just answered their questions and then they came around to the truth and came back six months to a year later and then apologized i've had that happen yeah, yeah. I've, had that hap I've had that same exact thing happen quite a few yeah. times so i try to be careful to not judge their opposition as somebody that just hates the gospel, sometimes people are just confused that they've been taught a certain way so much that they really think you're teaching something wrong. So, you know, I noticed that Matthias is in the chat room and he put a post up there for me. And he said, that's what he was trying to do with, you know, who it's, I won't necessarily go into who we're referring to, but he's tried to help someone who has been horrible to him and us and yet he's trying to help them and hoping that it'll be burning hot coals. That concept, he's using that. Matthias, why don't you click on the link and join us? I know I sent you the link. Are you, are you too busy to join the panel? Uh, join us if you can. Uh, all right. So nobody has had success using that. I, I've done it. And it does sometimes mm -hmm. get the reaction that, that Paul says that we should be getting, is that they feel embarrassed and ashamed of themselves when they're mean to us. We return their meanness with kindness, and they're all embarrassing. Oh, my gosh, I don't know. I'm sorry I said that. The way you responded to me was just it humiliated me. It was, I'm really sorry I, I talked to you like that. I've had people do that. Yeah, I've had to learn that the hard way, Brother Luke. Uh, as Renee was saying earlier, you know, her, she gets real passionate about the gospel. I'm the same way. We like to talk with our hands sometimes, and people say, you know, Somebody who talks with their hands can't be trusted. I've had people shut down my Facebook page. Um, I've had groups and groups of people report my videos as harassment. Um, people call me devil, wolf, false teacher, uh, greasy gracer, uh, easy believer, heretic. You name it, we get it. Uh, but, you know, this is what I said last night, and I stand by it. If you're getting attacked like Apostle Paul got attacked, you are spreading the true gospel. And I had to learn uh, through patience and through the Lord. There were two instances in the last three years where mobs and mobs of people. Now, before I lost my page, I had about 14,000 following, 5,000 on my page. Videos were reaching anywhere between 20 and 70,000 people. Um, oh, wow. In two instances, I had mobs of people all over slanderous lies and complete attacks uh, joined like the mob mentality and come against me. And I literally was going to just shut everything down and ignore everyone. But God just said, be still, be who you are, 
And as the uh, the lady said in the blue, people that truly know you, they know better. So it just, just, you know, continue to love on people, continue to be who you are. Let God shut their mouths and just trust in him. And, and through patience, he taught me that. And the verse that you mentioned about the hot coals, uh, not returning evil for evil, is what helped me have the strength because naturally I am a defender and naturally I am a very bold. So like before Christ, I would have jumped in the ring and knocked them out. You know what I mean? But, but through Christ and through patience, he taught me to just be still and remember that he is God and that knowing that with his hand upon our life, doesn't matter what they say he they cannot people's opinions of you cannot stop god's hand on your life they just can't a liberally conservative and uh mm -hmm. liberally conservative in the chat room reminded me that uh they were against me because i i worked in hollywood as a producer for so many years <laughs> i forgot about that and they they came back that person actually came back and apologized to me um months That's later cool. too I forgot uh, about that prejudice. Yeah, Brother that, Dave, that. <laughs> Brother Dave uh, just, just so you know, um, uh, the lady in the blue you refer to, that's Sister Paula, her, that's Bible liter Literalist is her channel. And it looks like you're ready to talk, Sister Paula. All right, Sister Paula, my bad. I'm sorry. I got it now, Sister Paula. Paula, you're muted. You're muted, sis. Thank you. Too many buttons. Um, <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> um, I was just going to add the verse about the vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. So if, leaving it to him, he'll do a much better job. If, if that's what they need, that's what they'll get. And I've seen sitting back, whether by um, just obedience to that or by circumstances, I've seen so many people just destroy themselves. That tends to happen. Amen. Even though it takes time. They'll, they'll turn on each other. They'll get bored with you and go on to somebody else. So it works out. It, you know, it just works out better when we don't do it ourselves. You know, it's absolutely true that you say that. And uh, as Renee was saying earlier, I just want to touch on the, the, what makes it worth it is that you know that you know that God is showing you something. God is giving you the courage to stand up for the gospel. And even though people call you a heretic or they call you a greasy gracer, or they call you insane or a child of the devil for teaching that Jesus Christ is sufficient without you or your efforts. Um, I've seen people become so hateful, but as time goes on, three months, six months, a year, even two years, I've seen them finally come to the end of themselves, get that revelation of the sufficiency of Christ and his finished works, and they'll come back in time and say, Brother Dave, I apologize for attacking you. The light bulb went off. I got it. I understand now. Thank you for standing up for it and never backing down. And yes, you'll take a lot of heat. You'll take a lot of criticism, but it's worth it if you can plant the seed that eventually God will water in somebody to where they get the revelation and they begin to preach the gospel. Yeah. Amen. Amen yeah. to that. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, did you say amen, or you wanted to? to I just said prayer? amen, nothing more. Oh, amen. Well, that's good because when you say amen, you get credit for everything. He is the said. amen. He, Jesus, is the <laughs> amen. So everything that Brother Dave said, when you say amen, you get full credit for it. You've agreed with it all. You might, yes, as, well, you might as well have said it yourself. Yeah, I, I, I want to tell something because since I know that Jesus Christ fulfilled it all. I'm not even getting angry at some critics anymore because I know I'm forgiven. Yes. Yeah, I know I'm forgiven and I give, teach them the good news. And I see, and I said unto them, and the moment that you believe you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, and one can say, well, that seal can be broken. I, I told myself, what? <laughs> that's not ask him what Ask him what scripture that's in. I don't know. He mm. just grabbed out of his pocket, not using scripture. <laughs> <laughs> well, Those forgiven much, love much. I, uh, yeah, I made a video many years ago, probably, I'm guessing, eight years ago, uh, titled Easy Believism. And uh, uh, I, I embrace the term as my own. 
I say I wear this as a medal, as a crown, a badge of honor. Bleasy believers, and that's me. And if mm -hmm. people uh, want to insult easy believism, greasy grace, or however else they want to use a pejorative, uh, they're not really attacking me. They're attacking Jesus and the gospel. So mm -hmm. it's that's on them. Um, I he will cannot be attacked. He's almighty. <laughs> I will tell you that uh, the uh, reference that Brother Matthias made uh, in the chat room is that I'll tell you a little bit more detail about that. Um, you know, a, a few days ago, I made a, a little video set titled um, uh, Bad News, Bad News, uh, what was it, Bad News, Urgent, yeah, Bad News Urgent. It's an eight-minute video and I'm telling everybody that YouTube's changing the art, the way it's the system works, and we're not going to be able to do these group discussion, live streaming programs uh, unless we have an alternative way of doing it, and uh, we need help. And uh, and so what response did I get? Well, of course, Matthias reassured me. He says he's got a system, and we're going to be able to continue to do it. Um, Sister Paula has contacted me. She's working me, with me also. So uh, there's we're going to be able to do that. So everybody be at peace. We're, this is not going to be an issue. It's just a question of learning. There are solutions to the problem. It's a question of learning them and applying them. But someone we all know made a video following mine, actually celebrating our problem and said, isn't that wonderful? They're going to go out of business. They aren't going to be able to do their uh, live streaming. But I know how. I know I have the technical knowledge to know how to do it. So we're going to grow. All their people will have to leave them, and they'll all come to us. What, what do you have to say about that kind of an attitude, about a person that's uh, naming Christ as their Savior? Uh, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs, for you know, I skip a few words, but great will be their reward in heaven. Amen. You know, it's just it's very sarcastic and it's and it's very uh it's very ungraceful. And I think it's uh it's a little bit malicious, but you know, it's gonna be that way until they get the understanding of the uh sufficiency of who Christ is and what he accomplished. And the Bible makes numerous references where it says, for us, in him, through him, his life. It's all about Christ. And I think the reason why these people attack people like us who have, who have come to this place of absolute trust and surrender in, uh, uh, you know, to his finished works alone, I think they're very angry inside and they're very uh, um, confused inside as to their own shortcomings or as to their own uh, failures in sin. Or, or they get really high-minded and self-righteous to where they feel like they're much more holier than you. And I think what happens is, is they begin to get bitterness and self-righteousness and contention swirling through their heart. So when they see somebody who's so comfortable, so confident in the person and finished work of Christ, I think it begins to actually anger them. It, it does. Uh, they can save themselves, but it is far from the truth. Well, it's because they say, like, well, how dare you think? What, what, they, think, what they think is that we're promoting ungodly living or right. sin because we okay. say you don't have to do this to be saved because it doesn't do any, has nothing to do with your salvation. So they think because we say that, that we're discouraging it, but we're not at all. And uh, also, I've seen people, I told you that Pentecostal lady got resentful at our se eternal security. I said, if you backslide into sin, you'll lose your time. She got angry when I told her about eternal security. She was mad about it. She like yeah, I just I just got called a uh, I just got called a devil earlier today because I said that Jesus was sufficient to forgive all of our sins, and the person uh, argued me and said it only applies to our past sins. What's he gonna do about all the uh, future ones he does from now on? That's what I told him. I said, I said, what if you commit 300,000 sins from the time you now until the time you die and you forget two of them and you only repent or confess 298,000? You're going to miss out on heaven because of those two that you forgot to confess? And what about the ones you don't even know you commit, like David said? 
Oh, you know, it just uh, it doesn't even make sense, sister. It doesn't even make sense. Their mind, their train of thought. I mean, either Jesus paid it all or he didn't. And if he didn't, who's going to get in? Yep, nobody. I mean, if we're really honest with ourselves, yes, there are times where we can walk in step with the Spirit. We can walk close with God. Yes, we can say no to temptation. The devil doesn't have any power over us. And there are times where we are we are really walking in step and, and things are flowing and we're full of joy and we're not really sinning. But there's other times where that doesn't happen to any. I don't know anybody who walks in the spirit without sin 24-7, 365. I haven't met one yet. And I've met thousands upon thousands of people. Right. So who's really good? Say they do. <laughs> if, you know, when, when somebody tells me that they, that they are completely sinless, I just know that something is wrong with them. Um, because even, even a non-Christian will tell you, that there ain't no way nobody could be perfect ever. Well, there's uh, one of these uh, street preachers. Uh, he, especially, he especially focuses on university campuses. Uh, he, I don't know if he's still alive. If he is, he's probably 80 something now. Uh, his name is Jed Smock. And he's, he's famous and well known in the street preaching community. And Jed wrote, he wrote a book. His wife wrote the preface to the book, and he is uh, he is one of the preachers that, that teaches um, sinless perfection of the believer. Now, of course, we all know that we are sinlessly perfect in the eyes of God. Uh, God sees us uh, covered with the righteousness of Christ. So in that respect, we are sinlessly perfect. But they believe that we can be sinlessly perfect and, and after we're saved uh, to... Uh, uh, we don't have to sin anymore because we're we, the grace of God will strengthen us so that we can stop sinning completely. So that's what the, they they're teaching. Well, Jed's wife, he wrote in the preface that for forty years that they've been married, Jed has never sinned one time. Ugh. Oh, really? You know how deluded a person oh, has to really? be. <laughs> Not to to actually think any thoughts. They, for 40 years, they haven't sinned one time. That, that is a really state of delusion, isn't they, it? They, that they is have a, had a low standard of the ten. They're thinking the Ten Commandments. Okay, I haven't committed adultery. I didn't lie. Mm -hmm. I They're going down the letter of the law, and they're yeah. not realizing that you have to fulfill the law from the heart and in the mind, which we, we can't even control sometimes. And they're missing that. And they, they miss it. They Jesus showed the standards of the law. And in order to earn salvation, it's impossible. Now, in order to keep them to be like a decent person in man's eyes, yeah, you can do that. You could keep God's, you could keep man's standard of the law and be a pretty decent person on the earth, but it won't earn you salvation. And that's what Dave and I were talking about last night. People even Buddhists, even Buddhists and Hindus and, and atheists uh, can be morally good. That's right. That's right. Yeah, it has, an, it has be, but they they don't understand that that eternal life really is free. Uh, but it, 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 that we suffer consequences for sin still, you know. And you can even die early, like we were discussing last night. I'm Him, gonna tell you right now, I believe wholeheartedly with all of my heart. I believe it's driven by their own inner confusion and their own fear of yet to come to that man. When you listen. Ooh, when you come to that moment that you just know that you are just just completely helpless and you turn to Christ and you put all your trust on him, man, something happens on the inside of you. And it's just like, wow, the weight gets lifted. The scales fall off your eyes. Your heart is open. And yes, you're still going to wrestle with your filthy old you and you're still going to wrestle with your wicked heart. But there's something in you that just knows that they just know that it's all Christ. And it's it's so beautiful to have that assurance. And they don't have that. They don't have it. Hey, uh, can, I ask, uh, can, can I ask Sister Paula? She looks like she's been waiting to say something. Yeah, remind me to tell you about counter deception in a minute, Luke. Okay, counter deception. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say that I met somebody in the past year who was a brand new believer, and he read a verse out of First John that said the believer does not sin. And what he first of all he did was ignore other verses, some in that same chapter that says if we do sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Um, 
he took that to mean that by definition, everything he does is not sin. He can do whatever he wants because it isn't sin. So he believes it's a little twist on it, but it's a dangerous twist because he could say, hey, I, yeah, I, I lied to you, but that's not a sin because I'm a Christian. That's how bad it gets. Oh, wow. Wow. Talk about turning the grace of God into a semi yeah. well, well, I want to respond, but Renee, go ahead. Uh, counter deception, I'm reminded. Oh, I, I was just going to say, uh, counter deception sent me a picture today of a street preacher you were talking about, and he's got obey or uh, go to the lake of fire, repent, uh, stop sinning, all the, all the, and I was looked at and I said, what a twist on the true message Jesus died to give us. He, he died to, to, to tell us how much God loves us and that we're helpless and that we can't be good enough so that we need Jesus's blood. This is the exact opposite. This is saying you've got to be good enough or you're going to go to hell. Yes, because Sister Renee, they, they deny the sufficiency of the finished work of Christ and they deny and they argue against the imputed righteousness of Christ. They call right. that a false heresy. Yes, that was one of the things that guy from, uh, I did a video on it. Uh, he said the top five deceptions in the church and one of them was imputed righteousness. Uh and he said, see, he who does righteous is righteous. And I said, well, he who reads is a reader. It's just a statement of fact. That has nothing to do with your righteousness won't get you to heaven, though. So <laughs> I mean, that, it's not even talking about salvation in that context. So, But uh, my, my point was that that is the representative that people associate with Jesus on this earth. And that is so sad. It's yeah. the exact opposite of what we need to be telling Well, people. you said that he was twisting it, but... Good thing we've, we've got someone here who knows how to untwist this, these verses. <laughs> we, call her, we call her our untwisted sister, Renee. Uh, the, uh, I had uh, an experience this morning I'll tell you about, but first I want to talk more about this term, easy believism. Uh, there's another term that's also used called um, cheap grace. Now, uh, Grace Evangelical Society, uh, Zane Hodges started it and Bob Wilkins is, runs it now and they have a publication and I, I get their publication every month and read their articles. But I remember a couple of years ago, they did an article about cheap grace uh, and they, they flipped it around and they said what they're really doing is, and they're the ones that are guilty. It's not us who uh, are guilty, uh, you know, uh, with hyper grace, knowing that grace is abounding, and um, they're they're making the mistake of uh, what they call cheap law. They're watering down the law, but they try to do that with Jesus, and he ratcheted it down and tightened it and said, "It's not just what you do; it's even your thoughts." So, um, I have a, I had an experience this morning uh, at the gym. My wife and I are at the gym working out, and I'm and I'm I'm ready to go and waiting for her. And she, and I see this this young woman, and I I, I'm sorry. I, I I my eyes noticed. I couldn't help but notice that she had a perfect figure, and my eyes were just drawn to it. And I looked at it and I, I turned my head on my, my my eyes is like my brain. My eye, my body was like pulling me back to look at her figure. And I thought, I realized what was going on. And I thought, I have to uh, replace this. What's the best way to get uh, any? And I wasn't even lusting. I was just acknowledging, wow, this, she's really beautiful. So I don't think it even went to the level of lusting. But uh, I didn't want that first step. First you acknowledge, and then you can begin to lust. So I wanted to nip it in the bud. And I said, I need to get that thought out of my mind and put another thought in there. So I started thinking of my wife instead. Well, and then I started thinking about Jesus. And you need to, the best way to not think about sin is think about Jesus. And you're not going to be sinning if your mind is on Jesus. Amen. 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 The same, that, uh, the same struggles that you have, Brother Luke, the same struggle that I have. And sometimes I think, Hey, wait a minute, Jesus completed it all. It's just the uh, same issues that you had, brother, 
I had also, but immediately my mind makes a switch. Hey, wait a second, Jesus paid it all. Let me, let myself therefore ponder my heart that he indeed fulfilled all. So the enemy can come uh, whatever he wants against me and uh, convince me that I'm lost. I'm not lost because on what he has done. So <laughs> whatever he tries to throw at you, even when you get nightmares, you know, you are on the right path because of him, not because of yourself. And that's what I quite keep pondering in my heart from now on, um, since a few weeks, by the way. Here's something that is uh, another subject we can talk about that's important, and, and that is uh, our Bible, our faith, and the United States in 2019, and the uh, 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 our our freedom. I see here that there in the chat room, there's an automatic thing going on now with with uh, Google, and YouTube. Uh, censoring things that could be construed as hate speech. And if you look here, someone posted deaf, uh, let me see. Uh, where is it? Let me, it's going so fast, I can't. Uh, okay. Uh, there's a post from Deaf Bread that was held by YouTube. And it's being censored. So it was blocked out. And they're considering whether this is uh, should be censored or not. And the entire, there was nothing in it except it was scripture. And let me see, it says, dang, if someone, it's moving so much, I can't read it. Uh, but it's, can anybody read the, what was written by uh, Deaf Bread that's Jesus's words and nothing else? Uh, trying to, my, okay, here, oh, dang. Let me see if I can. Oh, gosh. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh, dang. I can't get it to stop at the right place to read it. Uh, okay, okay, here. He it. Again, the right. second time the cock crew, and Peter called to mind the word that Jesus said unto him, before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. And when he thought thereon, he wept. That says this message is held for review. That is that verse right there is being held by YouTube. They're reviewing whether this is acceptable speech. Read that again. Oh, I, I know why it picked it up. It says, and the second time the cock crew and Peter called to mind the word that Jesus said unto him. The algorithm picked up the word cock. <laughs> yeah, it picked yeah, up yes, exactly. the actual Before, word. Yeah, before the cock crowed twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. And when yeah. he thought thereon, he wept. Yeah, they, and they, they think the dirty Google part. thinks the word cock is being used derogatory. Yeah. All right. Oh, no foul language. Okay, yeah. I get it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've seen other comments uh, in the recent programs. This just started. I, I just noticed it this week. People are making comments, and uh, if it's uh, if it's something that uh, their uh, algorithm is uh, identifying that we would think is acceptable, but they they're, they don't think it's acceptable. To, to well, Brother Luke, the uh, social media across all platforms are beginning to look for keywords such as Bible, Jesus, uh, Christianity, uh, gospel, faith. They, they have an algorithm because um, I read an article, I think it was a couple of days ago, that a lot of the investors uh, that put their money into the uh, stocks of the social media like Snapchat, Facebook, uh, YouTube, Twitter, a lot of the investors don't want any affiliation with uh, any Christianity speech. Uh, now, I saw a video a couple of weeks ago of some of the big YouTube channels that uh, have been either demonetized or censored or, or even closed by YouTube. And these people are big. I'm talking about they have a million subscribers and they're making a lot of money on their monetization in advertising and they're closed down because there's something they're doing that youtube it doesn't agree with their political viewpoint or something that they're saying and uh so a lot of these people you know, they're forming they're trying to form an alternative and there's a thing called library that's listed as lbry.com yeah library yeah go to lbry.com check it out 
I just joined it and Matthias joined it and uh, all of your content will be can be switched over there so it's preserved and uh, because if YouTube does close down and we lose our content uh, we're uh, we're we're running that risk that they they may just close our any anything that is uh, okay. It looks like Paul has some thoughts on this. I was just going to say I joined Library about a week ago. Um, they also have a Discord channel for getting help, and I'm on their BitChute, Steam it. I've had trouble. I don't know if I'm losing my DTube account because something got some it crashed when I signed up for DTube, which is connected with Steam it, and so I don't have my private posting key and I'm I don't know if I'll be able to get it back but I can post to it I can't control my channel but I can post to it from Steam it but the, all those platforms are open source and on the blockchain um, except BitChute I'm not sure but at least they're a lot more tolerant than YouTube or the other platforms so um, it, it's a little bit of a learning curve on some of the things but it is a good alternative right yeah we, we need to have a backup plan because uh, uh, our content just may be lost uh, because we're not saying what they, uh, they, the, either the government, the corporations, or whoever's making these decisions uh, approve of. So um, you need, we need to have a backup plan. Well, there is a, I mean, I'm not saying it's the, it's the main reason, but there is a very heavy pressure and influence from the far left uh, liberal companies and ideologies that really, uh, since they're ponying up the money uh, for these uh, platforms, and they're 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 a main shareholder or investment in these platforms, they want the conservative talk or the religious talk shut down. And it's not just happening with Christians. I mean, it's happening with people who aren't even Christians but hold to things like the constitution or they hold to conservative views or they hold to, you know, um, people's rights to bear arms, whatever it is, even non-Christians are being throttled down on social media platforms, uh, because they just, they just want to silence the conservative talk and the religious talk. We should make our own site just for free grace preachers. Well, that's kind of what library did. The people are saying we need to form a new organization that's completely going to be free that will never be have to worry about having that kind of, uh, of um, uh, censorship. So uh, I, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on it, but I'm waiting. Matthias says after about four or five days, he had about 400 videos that were automatically uploaded onto it. And I, but I have so far I haven't had any of my videos uploaded. I'm waiting, so I, I don't know what I have to do next. But yes, Paula. Yeah, there's a, I I forget where it is, but there's a link you have to go to to tell it you want to mirror your YouTube channel, and then you get into a queue, and eventually it happens. Okay, another uh, see. another reason I need your help, Paula. <laughs> <laughs> Paula has, has uh, a lot of technical skills, and she's been helping me. So thank you. You're welcome. I'll, I'll try and remember where that link is. I'll look that up. All right. Hey, Paula, can I contact you to maybe help me with a gospel website? Sure. Okay. I, I used to, I've been a web designer, so I might be able to help you. Oh, that'd be awesome. Thanks. Sure. Wow. If Renee gets a website, man. Well, that's what I was going to tell you guys. If In case of an emergency, I have a website, um, but I haven't published it yet. I'm going to publish it soon. And in an emergency situation, if there's nowhere to upload, uh, you know, we can get on a program that has Hangout or whatever similar that brings people in type of interview program. I, I'm sure Matthias knows of some. Uh, and then we can broadcast right from the website. Yeah, I'm sure that there are, are ways to do this, but you need uh, some experts like Matthias and Paula and the other people that we know. And there's plenty of people in our uh uh, congregation that have the skill that we're going to need, we're going to have to depend on them. To, otherwise, uh, the rest of us who don't have that kind of ability are, are uh, unfortunately, I feel bad for a lot of the programs that are not going to know how to make this transition I, August 1st. But I'm not laughing at them. The way that, remember, I mentioned there's another group that they were laughing and happy that looks like Church of the Eternally Secure is going to uh, not be able to do it, ha ha ha. 
Now, where I'm not laughing, but I feel bad for anybody that's not uh, able to uh, make this transition. Amen. Okay. Uh, by the way, if uh, anybody in the chat room or, li or anybody listening now, if you want to join the panel, uh, I keep posting uh, the link to join. There it is again. If you can click on that, you can join the, the panel to discuss, uh, talk with us uh, rather than just just in the chat room. Okay, what else can we talk about? Uh, any any other um, uh, Bible uh, issues that uh, need to be addressed? I, I don't know about you guys. I went into a church years ago, I, first time there. Nobody knew me, and they. Uh, uh, I sat down next to someone, and they they handed me a Bible because I didn't have a Bible with me. And they hand me a Bible, and I said, "Oh no, no, I, I've already got it memorized." Do what? You said you, you said you had it memorized. I sat down next to somebody in church. They didn't know me, and they saw I didn't have a Bible, so they hand, wanted to hand me a Bible. And you told them you had it memorized. Oh, no, 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 that's all right. I've already got it memorized. Oh, my. We should have wrote the book of Eli about you. <laughs> it, was oh, course, Luke. it was, of course, it was my attempt at humor. <laughs> it was the book of Luke. Okay, now, who is, <laughs> uh, who is blessed? Uh, let me see. Uh, this Blessed by something, something. Uh, why don't you go say hi to us, whoever you are? Hello. Hello. Who are you talking to? Uh, my name is Bruce. I, I came in. I. Oh yeah, I remember him. Bruce. You were. I remember him too. Last night, weren't you? Yeah, I did come in. I, I saw that you had a different <laughs> message there, and you asked yeah, okay. people to come in, and I wanted to say hi to Paula, if that was okay. Yeah, sure. Okay, Hello, Paul. Uh, Caleb with us too. Uh, Bruce, say hi to everybody. I'm going to take a minute and introduce yourself if you like. Hello, everybody. I'm Bruce. I don't hey, know how if you Paul doing? me or not. I don't know. Not sure. What was your What was your question? I don't know if Paula remembers me or not. Paula is is Bruce memorable? Wait, I'll show my ugly face. Maybe she'll remember me. Uh oh, my. Uh, Who's down oh, you here? Need, you need to come into the lights, uh, Bruce. Oh, there he is. There we go. You. Hi, Bruce. Hello. <laughs> he knows Bruce. What about you, Hello, Bruce? Hello, Bruce. I think I saw Bruce talking to Matthias the other day. Yeah, I think yeah. He, was, uh, he was talking to Matthias last night, if I'm correct. And, and we also have Caleb with us. Caleb, why don't you say hi to everybody? Hey, everyone. I just. I just got off another live stream, so yeah. Hey, little brother, you got a tight social schedule, huh? <laughs> yeah, I was on Melted Zone's live chat for a little bit, and oh. then I asked them if I can come on here. Your uh, Caleb, uh, your audio is very low uh, to me. I don't know if everybody else can hear you. Can everybody hear uh, Caleb, or is it just me? I can hear him. I can hear him just fine, but I think your audio, brother Luke, for me is the same way. It's really low. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, don't know what to do. I got my microphone close to me. Uh, okay, uh, now Paula left and came back because she couldn't hear Bruce, so she left and came back. Uh, Bruce, why don't you talk and let's see if if uh, okay. Paula can hear you this time. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, I remember you from like a long time <laughs> on YouTube. Did you have a different name? Yeah, yeah. I think I showed my face earlier. My camera goofs up when I turn it off. I turn it back on. I have to turn the brightness back up. Oh, so you remember I remember me? your face, but I'm like, what name did you used to use? Um, Goodness, I had a number of different channels. I shut them down when I thought things just got too bizarre or something. I don't know. And then I went and played guitar for a long time in the guitar community. Just playing around with that on YouTube and... Kind of came back to this here uh, relatively recently. It's got a lot of interest to come back and, you know, talk with Christians, look at the Bible more, you know, and, well, it just sort of goes hand in hand, I think, talk with the reading, you know. So, yeah. Well, I didn't hear much of your conversation with Matthias last night. How did that go? It was good. Yeah, I, I enjoyed talking with him. Um, 
Yeah, it was, it was, it was fun. I think we talked for like, oh my goodness, you know, I think like nearly like five hours, you know, I think four or five hours. Yeah. <laughs> it's a long time. <laughs> yeah, I, I probably. What was, was that? What was it, Luke? Was that the flat earth thing you're talking about? No, that was Matthias. I uh, got into a, a discussion with him last night after the uh, flat earth talk, I think. Was it, wasn't it after that, uh, Bruce? No, I guess it was a couple well, nights ago. Now that I think it was, about it. Was it earlier yeah. yesterday? It was just yesterday, yeah. sometime, I think, that I saw you on, talking to him. Yeah, I think it was the night before, but, but you know, uh, considering right. I think we were up to like, I was up to like four or five in the morning. I forget what time, what day it was which, you know? <laughs> yeah, Matthias can go on for four or five hours. Uh, I've, so I've always thought that um, uh, there's a saying, that um, I think this is true. The, the mind can only absorb what the hind end can endure. <laughs> no. So uh, sometimes uh, when we talk too long, uh, it just it ends up, you know, people can't. What you mean flat earth? I thought yeah. the earth was a hexagon. Uh, no, it's an, no. It's, an Hello. it's an octagon where we all fight each other. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just messing with y'all. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah. It, we live in the eye of a giant. Who was yeah, speaking? we live in the belly of the whale. Okay. Yeah. Who was speaking on talking doctrine? Is that Messiah? The earth is a pizza. There, there's somebody different talking on talking doctrine. I'm wondering, is that his son or is it? I thought it was somebody different. Last night he was talking about flat earth. Oh, that's David. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But he had mentioned about um, God, a verse that I really thought about, where he turned it upside, everything upside down or something. But, but regardless, it was about turning it upside down. And I thought, well, that can't happen on a ball. Nope. Indeed. You know, it, that was kind of strange to me. I've looked at a lot of different verses that made me wonder, but that was unique. It was something different. You know? Yeah. Yeah, and he, he, he really only scratched the surface as far as uh, the, the content that we could have got over. Um, but, uh, I, well, uh, let me ask, is there uh, any subject that uh, is pressing on anybody right now? Anything that is, is like urgently we need to, to help anybody with? Um, earlier, when I was on Esteban's channel, um, we were talking about the seven trumpets and we kind of had trouble with interpreting what the trumpets mean and what's exactly going to happen. So maybe we could touch a little bit on that right now. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, well, I can sure tell I you, know. I can tell you now the bowls and the trumpets, that's the time of, that's a, that's a form of judgment coming upon the earth. Um, what is it? What is it that bothered you about the trumpets? Was it the timing, or was it? Well, it wasn't that. Well, nothing bothered me. I was. We were going over them and what each of them meant. I I thought that some of them were literal, like with the fifth trumpet, that actual demonic locusts are going to come out the abyss, and yeah. Well, as far as I know, I the 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 judgments that God is going to pour out on the earth are are, are very literal. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it, it's going to be because you know Jesus makes the reference that it's going to be a time so bad that it it's never been seen before in the history of humanity. Yeah. Well, let so me, it, uh, it really uh, leads me it leads me to believe a lot of those judgments are literal. Yeah, I yeah, was also no. told that the trumpets are blowing right now, and I'm like, I never. No, heard no, 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 no. Yeah, I never heard any of them. There's okay, people that say Bible that. Bible um, Bible. Go ahead, Luke. Go ahead, Luke. Um, okay, Blessed Bible Fight Club. Uh, I that's kind of a long name to call you. I don't. Is there something shorter I can call you? Yes. Yeah. You, you, you can call me Bruce. That's that's a lot easier. Oh, uh, were you the one that was asking the question about the trumpets, or was that someone else? No, that, I'm sorry. That was someone else. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Bruce. Okay. I, I know you're Bruce, but I got That I was Caleb. Work. That's Caleb that's asking about the uh, trumpets. Okay. 
Um, Caleb, uh, probably an hour or two ago, we got into Revelations. We're talking about our thoughts on that book. Oh. Uh, so I'm not going to go back and re repeat all that again. But I do have a question since you're you're on these trumpets and someone was talking about it literal or not. And I noticed that Sister Paula's channel is called Bible Literalist. So maybe Sister Paula could uh, explain to her, explain to everybody, what, what do you mean by your channel being Bible Literalist? I'd like to know how that applies to all this. Yeah, it's shorter than saying the literal historical grammatical channel or anything like that. But that's basically what it means is it's that approach as opposed to allegorical or some other thing like that. So not that God has feathers, right? Not right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, that there's it it takes everything into account that you would for any writing. It's it's just good reading comprehension. Um genre figures of speech, language, culture, writer, topic, paragraph, um, all those layers of context are to be applied to the Bible the way we would apply to any writing. And that way you have certain things that can help you understand what the writer meant most likely. And that's, uh, I think, the most sensible approach to the scripture. Okay. Well, Paul, I just want to take a second to say I really love your setup, and I'm and I'm hoping one day I got a little setup like that of my own. I love the whole little microphone idea with the little sound stopper set up on the computer. I can't wait for it. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, this was a Christmas gift, so I'm very happy to have it. <laughs> yeah. So did you get an answer to the seven trumpets? I don't, I don't remember anybody giving you an answer to that. Or other no, well, Ca Caleb was saying that they were talking about, Caleb said that he has people telling him that they're already blowing. And, you know, we got to remember uh, the seals, uh, you know, and we, we have people saying that, oh, we're already in the sixth seal. We're already in the seven seals coming. Well, if they actually know what the first seal is, they would understand that, that there's, I don't see any way possible the first seal's even been opened yet. <laughs> When, when the time comes where a third of the world is destroyed, we're going to know it's the end times. There's going to be no question. Exactly. And, that's the point. and the and the first, am I, correct me if I'm wrong, somebody, but I believe the first seal being cracked is something about the Antichrist being known coming on the scene. Oh, so the day of God's wrath will not come <coughs> until the man of sin be revealed. Yeah. And I... When Revelation is talking about the seals themselves, I think the very first seal is the the showing up of the Antichrist. So I don't understand how people would say that we're, you know, I've seen plenty, hundreds of videos that we're in the fifth seal or we're approaching the sixth seal. And how are we in the fifth or sixth when the first one isn't even open yet? <laughs> people have been saying it's the last days since the first century. I right. Mean, every, every century is some, you know, a uh, traumatic thing or war like we're, during the world wars people said it was the end of the world you know people are always going to associate whatever happens with bible prophecy and it's good we need watchers but i don't think people need to get all up in fear about it oh my goodness do they go overboard or what <laughs> a little bit. yeah when i look at it um bible prophecy is like like a, a spiral if you would take a, a spring or a slinky or something like that and put a dot on a, a vertical line on each of the coils, you would come around to that prophecy again and again. And that's the norm, I think, in Bible prophecy is yep. you'll have a vertical line through cycles that go through. And that's, great. that's why people, when they say, oh, it's a thousand years, you know, this is, this is it. I don't say they're wrong. I'll just say they don't know how many more turns they have to go right. through. Yeah. You know, so, right. right. Like the uh, uh, the uh, abomination of desolation, it 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 has happened with Antiochus Epiphanes, and uh, if the preterists are not to be believed, it's going to happen again during the last days. So it, it's happened before, and it will happen again. And uh, you know, Solomon said, "There's nothing new other under the sun. What will be will be again. What has been will be again." So, I think right. Paul is right, and a lot of his prophecies. Like we see Joseph is the type of savior. You know, every, every, we see um, 
the prophetic being fulfilled in shadows and then being fulfilled again. Right. Noah's Ark, a type of Christ, you know, Joseph, a type right. of Christ, like right. all that in the Old Testament are all types of Christ. We did a couple That's of very interesting um, uh, discussions on um, transhumanism and artificial intelligence and how that applies to end time. Yeah. Well, everybody, I hope everybody will go watch that if you haven't seen it. But uh, uh, unless now, you know, I just I just read Enoch. Uh, this year, uh, I never was interested in it until recently. But I, I didn't read. It. I did the audio uh, book of it. But it was uh, very Enoch is the only one I think that's old. I think yeah. first is the only one. Yeah, well, that's the only Enoch I'm referring to. Just the first Enoch, but it, it was very interesting. The kind of detail it goes into on things is really fascinating. But it does go into great detail about the angels and this uh, the the uh, uh, of course, you have the Seth or the, the Nephilim viewpoints there, but uh, the, all that is, is detailed in uh, Enoch. Uh, but there is a, a belief that they, the angels gave humanity all kinds of knowledge. It says this angel taught man how to do certain things, and another angel, he taught them how to do certain things, like make weapons. And, yeah. and so uh, Brother Jason Jack, he, he, he thinks that the, uh, they were really, really advanced because they got this advanced technical knowledge at that time from these angels. Uh, but um, including what we're approaching now with maybe uh, genetic engineering. Yep, I agree with yep. that. They sinned against plants and animals and fish, and they sinned against all kinds of creation. Yeah. Yep. I was if talking about that too. Yeah, if there is nothing new under the sun, uh, then this idea of transhumanism and uh, artificial intelligence, perhaps that did uh, happen before. But it, but I do believe that we're on the cusp of AI and transhumanism. And watch the, sh the programs we did on that. Uh, I think we all had a consensus opinion that this is going to factor into end times, antichrist, the market, at least all these things are going to be related to artificial intelligence. It's very fascinating. Billy's here. Hi, Billy. Where is he? Who is who joined? Oh, hey. Hi, Billy. Really? Yes. Hello. All the way from what is it, Kenya? No, no. Is it Kenya? Say hi to everybody. Some people don't know you. Introduce yourself. Hi. Mm. Yeah. You want to want to say hi and introduce yourself to everybody, or not? I'm Billy. Yeah. Um, my name is Billy, and uh, I'm I'm in Nairobi, Kenya. And I believe, you know, the essentials we have, yeah. we have to believe in the same essentials, right? <laughs> Salvation by grace through faith alone. Yes. Jesus Christ, nothing. All our sins of the past, present, and future are forgiven. We are free from the law. Um, yeah. We have Christ in us, yeah. So I'm a believer just like you guys. I think a new covenant grace believer. Before on the Friday, Friday, Fellowship Fridays. And isn't it wonderful uh, how this technology it connects us from around the world. Let, let me ask everybody, let's go down the line here. When I call your name, tell me where you are in the world right now, because uh, we do have people in the congregation who are all from all over the world. Okay, uh, Paula? I'm in Ohio, U.S. Ohio, and Bruce? Pennsylvania. Uh, Caleb? Kansas. Kansas, okay. Uh, Co Cody? I'm in Illinois. And Dave, uh, D Brother Dave? I'm in New Jersey. Uh, Frank? Netherlands. Netherlands. Renee? Virginia Beach. Billy is in Nairobi, Kenya. Yeah. And me, I'm in Sin City. I'm, I'm, by, I'm the worst of anybody here. <laughs> in Sin City, I am completely ensconced in the midst of sin. I spent a lot of time in that city, and it earns its name. Brother Luke, I can't wait, man. Later on this year, I'm going to be coming to your house because I'm coming out to Sin City. Excellent. Excellent. We'll go out there and street preach together if you like. I haven't been out there for a few years because I, I, I lost my 
I had to leave all the street preachers because they're either hateful or preaching a false gospel. And I had one coworker that we, Frank, he and I worked together for several years, and then he and I had a falling out. So finally, I decided uh, rather than going out by myself, I'll just use the internet instead. I'll but tell yeah, you I, what. I tell you what. I'll make it a point, brother Luke, that when I when I touch down in Vegas. I will come and we will definitely go out and we will we will street preach. We'll we'll pray for people. We'll do it all. Yeah, awesome. And anybody else, by the way, that reminds me that I have about a dozen people who have made a commitment and said, we, we are definitely going to come to Las Vegas for a, 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 a meetup uh, sometime this year or within the next 12 months. Uh, I'm Pretty soon, I'm going to ask everybody for time frames and try to, and then we'll try to figure out what time of year is best for everybody. And but we want to have everybody come in the congregation. There's about 600 people that are always participating in the congregation, and uh, out of those, maybe we'll have 10 or 20 or 50. I don't know how many, but from wherever you are around the world, you're invited. We want to all get together. Give each other holy hugs and, and and be able to have fellowship together face to face one time, and uh, so. But brother Dave, you don't have to wait for all that. You can come anytime. Anybody can anytime to see me in Las Vegas. Everybody goes to see Renee all the time. She's always got people traveling to spend time with her. <laughs> well, well you know, had- Renee's from my home state. I'm born and raised in Virginia. What city? I mean, what area? I was uh, born and raised in Woodbridge, Northern Virginia. You're in uh, you're in Virginia Beach. You're about four and a half hours south. Yeah, my mom's up in Fredericksburg, right outside of D.C. There you go. Fredericksburg is about thirty minutes south of Woodbridge. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> hey, yeah. I heard a lot of uh, a couple of my viewers that are in Africa said that there's a lot. It's a miracle. People like Billy. You know, see, God's got a, a, a group of people, no matter where you are, when you're his and you want the truth, he will get you. He's got right. a remnant. He's got a remnant. He's got a remnant. And I uh, I had a couple of my viewers in Africa that said there's so much lying signs and wonders. Like there's a, a, a heavy spiritual uh, facade. In a Africa counterfeit right spiritual now. movement. There's a yeah. lot of false yeah. prophecy. A lot of word of faith, prosperity teaching. It's a lot right. of twisted. Right. And to see somebody like Billy yeah. uh, believing in, in the essentials is definitely something you don't see every day. Yeah, absolutely. But they, they also have some pretty hardcore, like, lying signs and wonders, too. Like, there's, I heard there's some apparitions of Mary that's been appearing there and yeah. other wow. stuff. Principalities at work. Yes, yes, exactly. So that's amazing to me. Hey, uh, let me ask while we have uh, Brother Billy with us here. Uh, could you take just a minute and just give us an idea? What is life like in Nairobi? Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> um. Well, well, we we just still like what's what specifically? Um. Is it pretty modern there, and are, do you have freedom, uh, and, and are you, do you have plenty? Are you lacking things? I, I, oh, that's the kind of things I'm wondering about. Uh, for Nairobi specifically, we are good, yeah? For Nairobi, we are good, but some other parts of the country may be suffering and struggling, but Nairobi, and I would say I'm not struggling personally. Um, so, yeah. Billy, I wanted to ask you, Billy, uh, in your area... Is yeah. there a heavy push against Christianity, or is it a pretty fluent there? Nah, um, it's like you guys said, yeah. In days we have the health and wealth, health and wealth. That's the most prominent gospel, and the Lord, Lordship Salvationist, right? That's the most common. Um, very few churches preach on grace and stuff like that. Almost less than five percent. It's really. Yeah, so we don't have new covenant grace churches around, and that's how I ended up hanging out with you guys. Yeah. Well, we're happy. Their loss, our gain. Amen. And you know that makes me just—it makes me even more, um, you know, more confirmation that you know before I met any of you guys, you know, in my area too, there's a lot of emphasis on holiness, and if you you know, loss of salvation, and 
just work, 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 and, and always fear, you know, that you're going to drop into hell if you mess up. And, you know, I kind of just isolated. I got alone and I got in the word and I believe with all my heart that God began to teach me like not something brand new because his word doesn't change. But he began to teach me the truth that nobody else seemed to be teaching. And as I as I bear witness with it, as it as it began to change me and grow me and it helped scripture harmonize and it helped me have the. Uh, the right view of, of all the different books and how things flow together. And I started to meet other people. Uh, you know, I came across Renee's channel like two years ago and there's just so very few pockets of people who understand the finished work of Christ. And I'm wondering, you know, like it just kind of confirms to me that like we're walking the narrow road while everybody else is claiming the narrow road, but yet it's always Jesus plus something. And yeah. they're actually on a very broad road. That don't seem very narrow to me because there's a church. I can throw a rock. There's a church right next to my house. I mean, that's my neighbor. There's a church on every corner here in the Bible Belt, but very few. There's only one in my city that I know of that is really secure and stands on eternal security and grace alone. They preach against sin, of course. They want to preach to live uh, godly lives, of course, but... It, it's the only one on that foundation. And so wh when I think narrow way, well, 1.3 billion people in the world claim to be uh, Christian through the Catholic Church. Uh, and I was happier when the Catholic Church did not identify as Christian. They would say, no, 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 I'm not Christian. I'm Catholic. And that's exactly what they should have said, because they're not the same. Yeah. They're completely different. It's Roman Catholicism for a reason. It's based on Roman paganism. It's just got Christian yeah. words I, thrown on top of it. I, so I, that's I, not I it. Think that, I think, oh, by the way, let me say this because I got a note from uh, Polly here that uh, there's a, a mic noise. So um, let me ask everybody, make sure you're muting your microphone now. Please, everybody, please mute your microphone if you're not the one talking. And that'll cure the problem. We got Cody's not and Caleb are not muted yet. Go ahead and mute your microphones, please, because we're getting some kind of feedback that uh, Paul is noticing. I think it's my air conditioner. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, the ne this narrow way and the wide, the wide road, the narrow road, um, the, the Lordship heretic will interpret that as it's narrow because it's difficult. You know, you get, it's lordship and works and very few people will work hard enough, to do everything just right. That's how they uh, would interpret the narrow or the wide. Uh, but it's really only narrow because we're such a tiny little fraction of humanity. That's what uh, here's some numbers for you to consider. Now, how many billion in, in the world? Uh, are there seven billion in the world? Seven billion. Yeah. OK, well, here's Chris. Uh, first of all, we can get rid of all the Muslims, the Buddhists, the Hindus, all, and all the atheists. Get rid of them. Don't even count them. They're they're not. We know they're lost. Now, out of that, out of that, the remainder, there are two point billion uh, professing Christians. This let's call this these this group Christendom. Christendom is a collection of people who identify themselves as some kind of a Christian. Two point two billion. Is now, that including of, your Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses? Yeah, I'm going to okay. break it all down here. 2.2 okay. total in Christendom. Now we can let's get rid of 1.2 billion out of right off the top Roman Catholics. And the re people might say, oh, you're a little harsh. Don't you think some Roman Catholics are saved? Well, uh, here's how you can find out. Every Roman Catholic friend you have, or if you have family members, do what I've been doing for 32 years. Ask them, are you certain you're going to go to heaven? And if you're certain, based on what? Why? Why should God let you into heaven? I've never found a Roman Catholic that says, I'm certain. They always got their fingers crossed. Oh, I'm hoping, I'm hoping. And they also say the reason they might go to heaven is because of, well, I did this and I did that. I got baptized. I go to church. I, I, I. It's all based upon presenting themselves to God and saying, aren't I good enough? It's not pleading the blood, the finished work of Christ. No Roman classic will say, I'm certain I'm going to go to heaven. Jesus shed his blood for me, and that's settled, and I'm guaranteed eternal life. We are going to, that's our plea, but the Roman Catholics plea, self-righteousness. So let's take 1.2 billion off. Now that you've got 1 billion left, 
you can eliminate 800,000. Um, uh, many, many of these are Protestants that are lordship. Uh, and, and then you can eliminate uh, 15 million that are Mormons. You can eliminate 8 million that are Jehovah's Witnesses. And now of the remainder... Over 300 million charismatics, Luke. Yes. So I would say out of this uh, one point, uh, let's say one, one billion, out of this one billion, uh, that you probably have that, that identify themselves as Christian, uh, or let's say one third of the world identifies them as Christian, as Christian of some kind, I would venture that no more than 10% of those understand the gospel and believe as we do. And that leaves us with approximately 3% of the world's population. So 3% is very, very narrow. That's how I would understand this narrow or wide. And he, and let me let me add something to that, brother Luke. It's so it's so funny because everybody says that eternal security is straight from hell. It's straight from the devil. So many people believe it. Blah blah blah. But no, but no, they don't. And and if it is, even if it was from the devil, and we're all duped. What did he successfully do? Dupe three percent of the world's population. That means he's a pretty terrible uh, uh, manipulator. He's a pretty terrible deceiver. And yet the Bible describes him as, as very, very, very powerful, knowledgeable. Like he's not no little thing. Like he's other like he's the second most powerful thing God ever created. And I don't think he's gonna he's not gonna count uh, deceiving three percent of the world as as a victory. You know what I'm saying? Well, we know that that uh, the devil uh, he appealed to the pride of humanity. Uh, we know that Satan fell because of his own pride. Adam and Eve fell because of their pride, hoping that, well, I could be my own God. And, and this pride problem has been passed down genetically to all of us. We are all full of pride. And uh, that's the problem. People thinking that uh, I could make myself acceptable to God. I could, maybe I could even become my own God. So, uh, the yep. and, the, and it's them. and it's pride. It's pride that keeps people from coming to the end of themselves and putting that complete trust on Christ alone. Sorry. Hey, Bruce, yeah. you've been, uh, been, been quiet. Yeah, yeah, I was quiet. I'm just sitting listening. I, I have to admit that there is something that's on my mind with Billy. I was, uh, I, was I enjoy roasting coffee, and uh, I was roasting some Kenyan coffee today. And I, I can't help but ask, <laughs> is, that, uh, is it as big there as it is here? I mean, where I live, um, Ethiopian and I guess it was the beginning of it, but but Kenyan coffee just has this incredible flavor, you know. I just wonder if you enjoy it there or. Uh, of course, we love the coffee. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm it's gonna big. step away for a minute it's and big. get myself some coffee. I'll be right back. <laughs> Renee, Renee's in charge while I'm gone. Yeah. Oh wow, that's awesome! I got some uh, I got some Kenyan uh, AA, and you know, to me, that's like a really big deal to have that, you know, and and uh, yeah, it's just. A lot of life, vibrant. I roasted a little dark, but it still maintains, you know, a lot of uh, fruity, just you know, great, great flavor there. You know, so anyhow, I love your coffee. <laughs> yeah. I, I. Yeah. I was wondering if uh, does anybody has anybody in the chat been asking any questions? Is there anything they're struggling with to understand or to uh, what they've been going through, or do they need help understanding anything or? I have a question. What's going on, brother? Okay, so, okay, yes. Religion is all over the world, but have do you think that there is some true, there are true believers that are under religious bondage because they believe on the true gospel alone with faith in Christ alone, but all of a sudden here comes some very convincing false prophet and then all of a sudden, they're now under a bondage. Oh, do do I believe that there's a ton of saved people who are in error? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Because, yeah, especially in the Roman Catholic Church. What I've found out, though, over the years that I've, that I've been really, like, keeping my eyes peeled to this, is that somebody who's truly 
come the biblical gospel way through, you know, genuine faith in, in Christ and who he is and, and what he's done. And they get to a place where they're able to receive it, not work for it or not try to strive to earn it, but they can simply receive it and believe it. Uh, they get born again. And then as they begin to walk or they begin to go forward in their faith, they run into things like Lordship Salvation or holiness movements or very, very legalistic uh, systems uh, and denominations. And they get caught up. But what I've seen, um, even some being caught up for many years, somehow, some way, the Holy Spirit always brings them back to that to that humble beginning, the simple truth, and, and they snap out of it eventually. I, I don't know anybody who's uh, completely remained in uh, those type of uh, other gospels, um, you know, the whole time. I've heard many, many testimonies and stories of, of people that, you know, got caught up in that. And, and it may it may have been five, ten years, but eventually the Holy Spirit drew them back to the to the foundation and to the basics. And the light bulb finally went off for them to where they have to trust Christ alone. And for me, it happened uh, through my own failures. For me, it, it just happened through my own inability to, you know, everybody I was around was seemingly so holy and so righteous and they were so upright and they followed God and obeyed God so well. And I always condemned myself because I could not be like them, you know, but I, I didn't realize that most of them were literally just putting on a game face at the meetings, at the worship service, at the church, you know, cause I, I, hanging with these people outside of those circles, you see a different side of them. And it's like, wait a minute, something's not adding up here. And, you know, I just got to a place in my own inability to, to, you know, be as righteous and holy as I yearn to be, but still failing often. And it just drove me to a place of like utter condemnation and just wanting to give up on God. And I literally was about to walk away. And then I don't know, God just, you know, peeled the scales off my eyes. And I just knew, I just knew right then and there that it was, uh, nothing that I could do. And I just had to trust Jesus. Like all my eggs went into his basket that day, you know? Yeah. Hey, bro. Uh, remember I was talking about that street preacher today. I told you about counter deception sent me. You were just saying that brother Dave, they only put on the face. Well, he's out there screaming at people. You got to stop sinning. You got to live holy or you're going to go to hell and all this other stuff. And uh, so He's preaching that and a counter deception walks around the corner and the guy's hiding his smoking a cigarette hiding in the, I mean, not that that's a sin. I smoke, you know, right, it, right. But, but it's, it's funny because they'll, they'll condemn you to hell for smoking. Yet right, he turns around right. and goes and smokes. Exactly. And he's telling people out there, they have to, you know, do that. So it's just, it, you're right. It's, it's not anything. There's very few. My pastor lives his faith. I mean, he's one of the few people I know that actually qualifies for a church leader, according to the pastoral books of Timothy, you know, same here. That's why I said I look up to my pastor and I aspire to be that mature and that fruitful. And I, I aspire to be like that one day. But he told me, he's like, you know, you remind a lot of me of myself when I was in Philadelphia starting out, you know, God, it took 30, 40 years for God to iron out most of his wrinkles, you know? I have a question. That, um, maybe somebody, you guys could help me out with this. Um, years ago, uh, I got involved in charismatic movement. And um, I did believe, but there was always uh, altar calls all the time. And so, I, you know, a number of times I go up for altar calls. But uh, during my the years of that, uh, that I was involved in it, I noticed that uh, there was always a teaching and I don't know what your thoughts are on this, but you had to always see God moving and doing this or doing that. And if you weren't healed of, of this or that, then your faith wasn't right or you weren't really with the Lord. And I think over the years, I, I left that bother me to a point, even then being here on YouTube and such, that I just started to question if I was really saved because I wasn't seeing this stuff happen. But does that mean that a person, you know, I wasn't saved or does it mean that I was looking, am I expecting too much for God or is, I don't know, you know, I, it's, I'm not you know, sadly, sadly, you're a byproduct of a, of a false, of a false teaching. And the Bible tells us, uh, we will know them by their fruit. Uh, most people think that means we will know them by how appropriate they speak or how well they dress or how calm and nice they are and how holy they are. No, 
Matthew chapter 7, when Jesus addresses the fruit that we'll know people by, is by the truth of what they speak, does it align with the word? And unfortunately, you are a victim of very, very, very false teachings, and a bad tree cannot produce good fruit. And see, I believe God was with you because you always probably felt like an outcast. You always probably felt like you just weren't good enough, or, or maybe you know you weren't as special as the other people. And that right there is from Satan, because God loves you. You know, uh, in all your messes, God loves you as long as you're turning to Christ and trusting Him. There, you know how many stories I've heard of people just completely giving up, uh, turn away from God because there's no miracles happening or there's no power. There's no. These people are like, um, Jesus likens them unto a wicked generation because they always seek at the sign. They don't, they don't, they walk by sight and not by faith. And, you know, it's, it's really crazy that God lets you go through that because eventually, you know, he's going to let you come out of that and he's going to show you. And it's, and it's a very prevalent false teaching. It's called the New Apostolic Reformation. Yeah. And they teach that worldwide uh, to, to hundreds of thousands of Christians every day. Uh, they're planting churches. They're, they're completely focused on, uh, you know, experiential things, right. physical feelings, senses. Uh, they, they twist the scripture. Yeah. And it's just a really, really bad teaching. And, and um, unfortunately, he can heal because he can. He answers prayer. Uh, I mean, I, I've had, you know, prayers answered for healing before, but what they're teaching is different. I just wanted to make it clear, brother, that we're not saying God can't heal. <clears throat> no, 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 no. God, listen, God, God, God can do uh, miracles, healings. God can do miraculous things. But what people don't understand is through these false teachings, they believe that they have the power and authority That's right. That's right. to move the hand of God. Uh, and, and if and if you're not moving the hand of God, then you're not anointed enough or you're not powerful enough or you don't have enough faith. When in reality, these people are very spiritually prideful because it is God's will that will be done. And we can simply turn to him and petition him, ask of him. And if it be his will, it will be done. And God will do miracles. Do you remember when a lot of people, a lot of the charismatic people say, well, Jesus said your faith has made you whole. So it is your faith. But what they're not getting is that it was prophesied that the promised Christ, the promised Messiah would come and heal the blind. And so when they reached out and said, if I just touched the hem of his garment, because it was prophesied that he have healing in his wings. So they believed the scriptures and believed he was the fulfillment of it. That's why their faith healed them. They believed what was spoken about Jesus. It's right. Not, not, not the, right. It's a, it's a very, very subtle twisting, but yeah. it's a very dangerous one where these people who teach like this and what you were sitting under brother is they, they misuse and misinterpret the authority or the power or the subject or the object of that faith. And they believe themselves to walk around being little miracle workers that God is just some weak uh, uh, person in the sky who's just going to, you know, run at their every whim because they declare a thing or they decree a thing or they they have faith uh, for a thing. And like God is just uh, uh, automatically going to respond to them. And here's the best way to combat that. You say, listen, God does not exist for us. We exist for God. And if, if you, rem you remind yourself of that every day then you'll know that you'll begin to see God in the small things. You'll begin to see God in the in the everyday things. You'll begin to see God in the, in the little blessings everywhere. And, and you're not always looking for, I can't tell you how many people I've had to counsel or, or speak with who have been completely demolished by that, that, that type of teaching and that uh, whole movement. She had speak. one lady on TV that brought her crippled son to a Benny Hinn concert. They spent all their money. They raised money to go to him and everything and found out he was, a fraud and it destroyed their faith. Destroyed I their faith. That I, I dealt with, I still have occasionally, but I, I had real bad panic attacks and uh, still get them now and then. And I became agoraphobic, but uh, I have the same thing and I've fought, I've been fighting it for uh, 15 years now agoraphobia, OCD, and panic disorder. It's no fun. And, uh, but yeah, no. <laughs> so what, if, I, if I had faith, it would go away. And it, it really um, had me questioning for years because I think, well, but, but I'd always pray, though, that, that God's will be done because I, well, I can't say, oh, at times I would think, well, I'd fall into that thing. 
But then I realized I, I can't make God do anything. And maybe there's something for me to learn out of it. I don't know. I don't know. But I can't yes. uh, make God, God uses do his strength is perfected in our weakness. God didn't take Moses' speech impediment from him. You know, Ooh, this is good. This is good. Watch this. These people, these people are are misusing the uh, applications and the and the teachings of the scripture, and they're looking for a quick, easy fix, as if God is there, as 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 if God is some force that they can command, um, as if they hold some type of power. It's just a really bad teaching, and I believe a lot of these people mean good. I believe they have a great heart and they do love Jesus, but they get the the contextual understanding out of whack. And they just get off on this tangent. But like you said with the panic attacks, Renee was getting on a good point. Sometimes God will allow those panic attacks in your life to keep you dependent on him, to keep you yeah. humble, to keep you yeah. uh, uh, pressing through faithfully. Because when God one day does decide to reach down and remove those from you, you're going to come out of that fire full of faith that God is faithful and you'll be able to comfort others who are going through it. Well, yeah, I mean, if you're... If you're, if you're uh having a major panic attack and you think you're dying, I have to admit prayer uh, does seem to come naturally. Brother, I had to, uh, I, I've been to the hospital over a thousand times. I've had panic. I got so bad to a point where I believe God used the, the panic disorder to bring me to him because this was before I, I got saved. And, yeah. um, you know, it got to the point where I, I wouldn't even, I would go to the corner store and maybe the grocery store, but I wouldn't leave like a two mile radius. I, I would stay in the house and for years and like, you know, I couldn't even go to restaurants anymore. I would have a panic attack probably every day. And I eventually just said enough is enough. And I was like, God, what do you want from me? <laughs> well, if I hadn't had my uh, illness that I hadn't gotten so ridiculously, because I was independent, you know, I had, you know, so when I uh, got to where I couldn't even walk and had to depend on people to get my groceries and to take me to the doctor. And it was so humble. It was humiliating. And, but it, it forced me to, it says, be still and know I'm God. And it forced me to turn to him for everything. I had, I didn't have my financial stability, my career, my looks, my health, nothing. Everything was gone. And yep. so, I believe that he used it. I don't believe he caused it. I believe some of my own bad judgment uh, caused it. A lot of it, not all of it, but he used it. And, and I believe you don't, a lot of people think God can't use you until all these things are taken care of. Nonsense. He'll use you just where you are. He didn't change Moses' speech impediment. He just said, hey, I'm going to tell you what to say. I'll be with you. And even when Moses was scared, he had he gave him Aaron, you know. So there, there's God doesn't always do the things the way we think we should do them. And the biggest argument with atheists is uh, my atheist friend said, well, what do, how do you explain a bunch of people worshiping in a church? They get struck by lightning and they all burn up inside. Why didn't he give them the knowledge to create a lightning rod so that they wouldn't? You know, this kind of argument. Well, first of all, we don't know if they were really his people. And um, maybe God, maybe God allowed that lightning to strike them dead because they were they were purposely being false towards him. Yeah, Who knows? But, yeah, we don't know. And, and, and uh, I mean, what's the worst? They're just going home to heaven if they were his. But um, the, or, the, or maybe later in life, one of those people would become a mass murderer. Yeah, something. you don't know. So uh, we always are quick to judge God and think we know how he needs to do things, but we can see all kinds of examples, even in the new covenant church where Paul was uh, prescribing him uh, wine for his oft infirmities. That's a chronic illness. Oft infirmity is something that constantly occurs. So this is a man of God. Uh, we know that Paul had some kind of, not just the thorn in the flesh, which were his persecution, but also something wrong with his eyes because he said, I know that you would have taken your own eyes and given them to me if it were possible. So we know that uh, uh, God allows certain things. And he and Paul said it was so that he wouldn't get puffed up because of the many revelations and so much power he was walking in. Uh, so we don't know why, um, but all I know is that God will use it. I have been healed. I was healed of kidney failure. 
um, had some people praying over me. It wasn't, nobody laid hands on me and go, in the name of Jesus, be. it wasn't like that. People just uh, prayed over me uh, and spoke scripture over me. And so I was lifted up in prayer and, and did recover. So I, I do believe he does heal. But I think what people, like Brother Dave was saying, that people get arrogant and they focus on the speaking instead of who was speaking. You know, it says, by faith, God created the world. Well, God didn't have faith. That wasn't it. By faith, we believe God created the world. We, we believe by faith. It's not that he created the world by faith. So, right. um, you know, and then God spoke. Well, it's the God that made that reality, not the speaking. You know, so um, we we just have to believe what God says. We, we have to believe what he says uh, and that he does give us a new glorified body. This It's as though the outer body perish, the inner man's renewed. So we know that this body is going to fail. Like Brother Luke said one night, <laughs> if God healed every Christian, no Christians would die. I mean, no. you know, no. So, but I, I'm not saying, I don't want to, rain on anybody's parade or say that God doesn't heal because I know he does. It's just so much of charlatans out there and they make it like it's your fault if you don't get a healing. Well, I know mothers that would, that believe God for their child. You know, I know their faith is real. And so it's just wrong to do that because we don't really know what his plan is and how he's I mean, exactly, because because nobody's going to be able to thwart, nobody's going to be able to usurp or thwart God's will, His overall will, and so that's why when we just petition Him, and for Brother Bruce, man, I man, I'm just like got the goosebumps, bro, because I know what you're going through. Panic attacks are the most scary. Look, people laugh at them like they're no big deal. I've had them so debilitating that I didn't even want to leave my house, and it they are. They, they just cause you to go crazy and you think you're dying. And I'm going to tell you what God used mine for. I was reading the word, but I wasn't really um, seeking it in that way to like, I believed what I read, what I read, but I wasn't literally trusting in its power or it's, or it's like authority in a way. So God used these panic attacks. And I, I began to read Psalms 91 every night. Uh, the minute I felt like an anxiety attack was coming on, I would open up the Psalms 91 and I would just speak it. And and through the practice of, of you know, learning that, that chapter and getting it uh, not, not just in my head, but down into my heart to where I began to believe the fact that the Lord was protecting me, to believe the fact that I was covered in his shadow, to believe. And as those panic attacks would strike me. I would, I would speak that word, Psalms 91, in faith. And the power that came out of that, it literally pushed the panic attack right away. It just pushed it back. And I and I began to be like, whoa, this is like a breakthrough for me. And, and it was just God l literally bringing me down to a place where I couldn't function. That's the what I believe the use of the, the crippling panic attacks were. So that I would get in his word and not only just read it, but but believe in it, in its power and it, in its promises and as I went through Psalms 91, man, I'm telling you, I still to this day have panic attacks, but they're nowhere near what they were for 15 years. And I and I can go on an airplane now. I can go on. Funniest story is I went on an airplane, and, yeah, I had a panic attack on the airplane, and I had to huff and puff in the bag. But God is so good that the person sitting next to me happened to be a nurse. So I felt so comfortable. I felt so calm. And God's just amazing. But it, what I'm getting at is I think God allowed that panic disorder to drive me to a place of humility to come to literally put faith in the power of his word. And every time I get anxiety to this day, I recite Psalms 91. I got it written on my heart. And I'm telling you, it's like just the Holy Spirit just fills up inside of me and that panic just disappears. Hey, Brother Dave. Well, somebody in the chat room was saying their pastor used to say, well, the reason you didn't get healed is because you have too much sin in your life. I, I feel bad for anybody that looks at themselves and goes, you know what, I'm healed because <clears throat> I'm so righteous. Well, what I was told was it, it was due to a lack of faith. And so I, I think that was detrimental, um, <clears throat> you know, really to me. But, you know, it, it, I mean, I don't know. I, it's, no, I, I hear you, brother. And I, they told me the same thing. 
well, they prayed was, over me. Yeah. They said I didn't have enough faith and that I was I was in too much sin and that's why I was being punished and God didn't, you know, I, my faith is weak and little There's did they know, update. little did they know, brother, I, I'm not even saying this in a prideful way, but because I was ignorant at the time, but now God gave me the eyes to see, I had more faith back then than probably that entire congregation put together and I didn't even know it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And and I was trusting God. And I said, I, you know, I got to a place where I said, God, if if you're going to take this from me, then I, then great. But if, if, if you're not going to take it from me, then I'm trusting you to give me the strength, the sound, the peace of mind that when it strikes me that I no longer fear, that I no longer cripple, that I no longer, you know, shake in my boots and have to call 911 because, and he did it. He did it. It didn't come right away, but he did it. As I postured myself in his word, and I began to believe in its power and spoke it. He did it, man. And and I'm going on the second year. And I'll tell you God's honest truth testimony right here. In two years now, I've only had three panic attacks. Mm. Uh, and I've had and I had a panic attack every day for 15 years. I've been to the hospital hundreds of times. I, I thought I was going to die every single time. They're not fun, and I sympathize with you because I know, and I people just have no idea how bad they are unless they have them. But I'll tell you right now, glory to God, I've had three panic attacks in the last two years. And they and each time I had one, I spoke Psalms 91, I trusted God, and, and they, they only lasted a few minutes, whereas before they would last anywhere to an hour or two. The, the thing is, is though people mix up when people would come to Jesus, and like the centurion that said, all you have to do is speak and I know my servant will be healed. What they're not getting there is that the, the reason their faith was great and their faith saved him is because they believed who he was. And they knew that the scripture said that he would make the blind see and the cripple walk and the leper cleanse. And so when they saw him, they realized who he was. So their faith saving them meant that they acknowledged who Christ was yeah. and that he did have the authority from God. It did yes. It, yes. Oh, my gosh. I'm so glad you said you got to write that down. They, they, it wasn't because they believed they were going to get a heal. It was because they believed in who he was and what the scripture said about him. And you got, these a lot of these people that, that go under this teaching, they actually believe that they are equal to Christ. I know. Please. <clears throat> they believe that they have the same power and authority as Christ. And I and I remind people every day, humble yourself, brother. Humble yourself, sister. We are made from the dust of the earth. Jesus Christ was eternal. He was he's divine. Yes, we have a divine spirit in us, and we are we are brought into God's family, but we are not God. Be careful about getting that high mind about I'm I'm I have the power of Christ and and the heavens shake at my command. Like, be real careful with that stuff. Yeah, that could get you killed. Uh, I have, I've had some experience uh, dealing with these people. Uh, if you look at my street preaching videos, uh, you see I was preaching in a wheelchair. I, uh, for a while, uh, I couldn't stand or walk because of the back problem. I had back surgery and it, I can, I'm fine. My back's fixed. But for a while, I was in a wheelchair. And when I'm preaching, a lot of people will come to me and lay hand, want to lay hands and pray for me. And I can't tell you how many times you have people come up and say, well, if you're if you're not healed, it's you, you've got some sin in your life. You, you're not willing to give up, or you just don't have enough faith, or you'd be healed. So that's the problem. And you're right, brother David. They're basically they're doing a role reversal, and instead of God being God and there be us being the servant, He's Lord, we're servant. They, you know, we're Lord, and He He serves us. He does what we command Him to do. He has to answer our prayer, yes, all the time. Uh, so that's the problem. People thinking that they can uh, uh, relate, connect his his uh, answering the prayer. Yes, if he's not saying yes, he doesn't answer his every prayer. But sometimes it's no, and sometimes it's wait. But he, we cannot make God say yes to everything we demand or want. Uh, I'll tell you, I, I I 
I had an experience today with uh, my wife. I told her I was going to take her to lunch and she was going to go to the store and come right back first. And more than an hour goes by and my I still struggle with this. I worry about the people I love, especially if I'm expecting them and then they're not back. And I'm, I immediately I start getting very fearful and worried that something happened. I called her up. No answer. I texted her. No answer. And so I start worrying even more. She's in an accident. Something's happened. And this, um, to me, some of the most beautiful scriptures we have are when Jesus tells us not to worry. And yet, uh, I cannot help but worry. I cannot get this way. And worry means, worry <laughs> is the opposite of faith. If, you have, yeah. if, you're worrying, if you're worrying, it means you don't have faith. If you had faith, you wouldn't be worrying about it. Now, I never worry about uh, my my uh, uh, Christianity. You know, uh, uh, I never have any doubts or worry about who Jesus is and his successful finished work for me and his promise of eternal life. But I do worry about everything else about in life, about uh, bad things might happen to those people I, I love. Not so much I worry about bad things happening to me, Except the bad thing that would happen to me is losing someone I love. That's the bad thing that I'm afraid of. So, you know, uh, I wanted I wanted I to tell hard. brother Bruce real quick, uh, brother Luke, while I had it on my heart. I don't mean to interrupt you, brother. I just because I'm when I have a quick thought, I'll lose it if I don't say it. And for brother Bruce, if you come across any of your friends or anybody that you're close to that feel that way or been under that kind of teaching, uh, remind them that in the book of Job, that's what his friends uh, accused him of. Oh, look what God's doing to you because you, you have too much sin in your life. You don't have enough faith. You know, God is God is punishing you. Or what about Paul? When they, they made the same accusation against Paul, they said, uh, this is not a man of God or he'd be flourishing. No, but yet he's in prison. He's, he's stoned. He's shipwrecked. You know, he, he's going through all this turmoil. Listen, the righteous in Christ will suffer. In this life, we will. I'm not saying everyone's going to suffer or that God cannot prosper you or that God cannot alleviate some of your uh, problems because he can. But but suffering, whoo, watch this. Suffering is a sign of our sonship. Even Paul, even Paul, he, you're going to tell me Paul didn't have enough faith, yet he was shipwrecked in prison, kicked out of everywhere he went, and people made fun of him saying he's not a man of God because he's struggling. But yet today we have the satanic antichrist twisting that they, oh man, watch this. I love how the Holy Spirit puts it together. First Timothy chapter six says people with a corrupted mind that are destitute of the truth will suppose and teach that gain is godliness. But see, God says that true godliness is uh, true gain is uh, contentment, being content. Paul said, you know, whether I have a lot or a little, I, I find my contentment in Christ. And so he, he suffered the same accusations, Paul did, and so did Job, and so did other people in the Bible. So, so we know that there are going to be times God is going to allow us to go through that fiery furnace. He's going to allow us to suffer, but we just stay faithful. Yeah, yeah, no, it's true. Yeah, there, I guess there's uh, it's always, I guess, things that we go through, and um, God could heal any of us at any time i guess but i don't think it doesn't seem right that we would demand them and i, and I guess uh as luke was i guess you know we, we, he he doesn't serve us right I, I mean in the sense that we can demand him and tell him what to do and I, exactly I guess I kind of it, even though i didn't believe it but for years i kind of i guess still kind of went with it and uh not to carry on about it but, you know not long ago a guy had asked me to, to play in a band and I think he thought that uh, he could just come by and heal me and with prayer and that kind of thing, which was fine. You know, I, that was fine. But I think he, he thought that, you know, I would be healed immediately. And after a couple months, you know, then finally, like, you know, because I, I could only play really locally, not go very far at all. Um, <laughs> I guess they decided God wasn't working because I wasn't responding. Or, you know, I, I already told him that. That's what I dealt with, you know, so keep it, you know, relatively close and instead, you know, well, close to me, like a mile or two, instead we ended up, you know, going, uh, you know, 10, 20 miles away or more, you know, I thought, oh, I, yeah, I can't do it, you know, 
not right now. No, oh, well. Yeah, yeah, and that's and that's another way of God shielding you uh, as well. You know, if if God wanted you to to play in that band and 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 travel far away, God would God would make the way and the provision. And you know, maybe God wants to take some time out with you in the wilderness, just you and Him uh, communing in prayer and in His Word to maybe reteach you some things uh, for you to seek Him out in the Scripture and. Uh, maybe just to uh, you know instill in you a, a you know a more deeply rooted understanding, and, and maybe you know we all got to take time. We all come in and out. Uh, like I, I tell everybody, you know, we we spend more time in the valleys than we do at the peaks. Like the, the peaks, the peaks are very short lived, and, and 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 as soon as God, it's like it's like God puts us on a mountaintop for a moment. And, and then, and then, boom! We're right back in the valley again. And it's like these mountaintops that we get to rest on and appreciate and look back and, and be thankful for. It's almost like it's just a, a time of spiritual rest before God wants to get us back in another valley because He's constantly teaching us. He's constantly pruning us. He's constantly uh, uh, growing us. If that oh, makes any sense. Side by fire. Hey, let me uh, let me interrupt just for a second so that uh, Paula can say good night to everybody. She's she's has to leave now. Sister Paula, thanks for joining us. I hope to have you with us again. I'm going to leave too. Yeah, it's midnight here. We got to get some sleep. We got church in the morning. Yeah. Sister. Uh, all right. Well, why don't we do this then since uh, several people need to leave? Why don't we uh, take a minute now and let each person say good night and, and sum up your thoughts on the time we have together tonight? Sister Paula, if you're, you're, you're able, can you uh, take a minute, say good night? Give us, share us your thoughts. Paul already split. Well, she's still there, though. Oh, no, that's blessed by that. I was Bruce. Okay. <laughs> I was thinking that was her. Bruce, uh, why don't you um, say good night to everybody and, and give us a little your final thoughts on the time tonight? Well, uh, I appreciate your uh, having me on and allowing me to talk a bit and listening to you guys. Um, really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, and, and you know, seeing God work and things. So, I, I'm, uh, yeah, yeah, I appreciate it very much. Thank you. All right, look Hope forward. Everyone has a good night. Look forward to next time uh, with you, Bruce. Uh, Thank you, Caleb. Stay good night and tell us what you think about the time tonight. Oh, I had a good time in. As always, the Gospels, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Amen. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Brother Dave? Good night. Yeah. Uh, Brother Brother Dave, what are your final thoughts? Amen. Uh, Brother Luke, I just really appreciate the, the time to fellowship. I appreciate everybody in the chat that comes to ask questions. And, lift, and I just appreciate everybody on the panel. And, you know, being able to fellowship and hear everybody else's stories and, and the questions and concerns they have, it, it really is a, is a beautiful thing as iron sharpens iron in a sense, but also as we can, uh, you know, bear each other's burdens. And, you know, just tonight, like tonight alone, just listening to Bruce and, and you know, me being able to relate with what he's going through with his anxiety. Um, you know, I, I wrote, I'm going to write that down in my prayer book and I'm going to pray for him and like always praying for you and sister Renee and everybody else. But just the fact that we can get together in fellowship uh, with the crazy world going on around us, it's just a very uh, good thing. And I'm very grateful for it. And I love all you guys. Amen. Thank you. And uh, I want everybody to know that uh, I spoke to brother Dave earlier today, I asked him since Brother Daniel is going to be out of town this week, if he could fill in for him uh, on the Sunday program. So he'll be joining us on uh, the Sunday panel uh, tomorrow morning or tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Okay, Frank? Yeah, I was picking up on panic attacks that almost everyone in the panel has it. I'm pretty amazed I have those panic attacks too. But what I have noticed is that these are just making me so humble, it draws me automatically to prayer, just like you two guys. I mean, that helped me a lot to uh, believe that I do indeed suffer for his sake. So uh, I'm really grateful that I 
was able to pick it up and recognize it for what it is. That we are co heirs with Christ because of what he did. And I'm, I'm really glad that came that I came out of this big Babylon do or, or burn in hell. And uh, I never encountered such a friendly community like you do, you all guys. So really, you have my thanks. I give uh, great praise to God because uh, on what he has established in such a short time. All right. Amen. Thank you so much. And uh, let's go with Brother Billy in Kenya. What yeah, time, so, is um, what time is it in Kenya now? It's 6.40 a.m. Wow. Yeah, 6.40. So I'd, I'd like to say, you know, um, thank you for, especially Brother Luke, you know, as in you're a pastor, you've been a pastor for many years. And for you to share that, you know, you also have some issues like worrying about others. And, you know, many people think pastors don't have such problems, but hey, it's good to see, you know, you're just like everyone else. So that's cool. And, uh, you know, Brother Dave and all the other Christians, like we are all grace-believing Christians, but you see some guys having panic, panic attacks and you think, hey, Christians shouldn't be having such problems, but that's not true. You know, um, we all struggle. We do struggle. Um, I also appreciate Rene, as usual, sharing her past and, you know, how she got out of whatever she was struggling with. And, you know, still in future, we might still struggle. But what I've learned today is you guys have said, even if we struggle, we should remember that we still have Christ in us and he's with us, right? You you don't, you, you shouldn't let anyone tell you that um, you've lost your salvation because, or, or you're not saved or you're dirty or you're not believing enough just because you're suffering and things are not going out how you want. So, yeah, um. I, I, we we believe in in miracles, yeah. Miracles do happen, but um, hey, so sometimes it doesn't happen for you. You prayed for something, you don't get it. It doesn't mean God is angry with you. It doesn't mean um, you know, you're not saved. Yeah. Amen. It just, yeah. So it just didn't happen. So um, like I read someone in the chat, you know, um, she said hey, she had cancer, but if she, she was ready to die, if she died, it's fine. She goes to heaven. But fortunately, she lived, and now she just hangs out with us on this channel and all that. So, yeah, um, planet Earth comes at us. I wouldn't say that it's God who brings diseases or it's God who gives us difficult circumstances, you know. Like, um, I think of him as a very good father, and I don't think there's a father who hurts the children, yeah. So I think um, the world just hurts us on its own. And so we always go to him, yeah? And as you said, he may allow it, yeah, fine. But he's not like the one who caused it. So right. because if you think, yeah, so if you think he's causing it, you're going to be angry with him. But he's not done causing it. There's, I think it's important to understand that he, he may allow something, but he's not the cause of it. Yeah. So, Very good point. Very good point. Yeah, so... Yeah, um, yeah, that's it for me. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I, you know, I really do love you guys. Um, you're, you're always honest and open and uh, the essentials we share I think we should continue holding on to that because like we said it's a narrow way and we won't find that out there so yeah let's keep holding on to that and continue the fellowship yeah wow brother wonderful wonderful words a lot of wisdom a lot of, a lot of love in there I appreciate it very much all right, Renee. I just wanted to reach out and hug Billy's neck. I just mm -hmm. love it. Um, Bible says that we have a joy that surpasses all understanding. Now, it, if we didn't have any adversity, how could God's goodness be manifested through us if we didn't have any problems for people to see us Preach. The peace that surpasses all understanding. That we're supposed to be a light to the world. That we don't, happiness is based on circumstance, but joy and peace that comes from God is a something that's within 
You can be in a prison and be free. It, it, it's something that God gives you. And it's not based on circumstance. And I'm guilty of waiting for my circumstances to change before I receive that peace and joy that God says we have if we just rest in it. So we are as gold tried by fire through these circumstances. And we're supposed to have dignity and love and compassion and mercy while going through it. That's what we are supposed to do as uh, Christians, as Brother uh, Luke said. <laughs> and I always, like, if I'm ever in doubt of, you know, God's love, I just look at the cross. And I go, that is my God. What manner of love is this? That he should call us the children of God. That we should be called his children. Do people even get what that means? I, I'm a daddy's girl. I love my daddy. So when I think of him, he is my dad. That's him. That's why I love uh, Billy's channel's name, The Father's Love. Because most people say, oh, we're all God's children. They don't get that. We have been literally adopted. We are an heir. We have an inheritance from our father. That's how much he loved us. And I, I really think we should, we focus on that, you know, and all the other stuff that happens, he will get us through it. He will get us through it. It won't always be the way we want because we want it over. We want the pain gone now and we want to be comfortable. Who doesn't? But that doesn't build character and it doesn't build compassion. I, I didn't, when, when I lived in chronic pain, that's when I got compassion for others that had it. Because you can't understand the isolation and the desperation of waking up and going to sleep in pain 24 hours a day. You can't. You have to endure it. So, you know, whatever happens, he's using it to refine our spirits. And uh, we just have to trust in him. And I would say to Miss Mira, I, I too have that attitude. Even though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Because I know he's good. It's good to be with you guys, as always. Amen. Yeah, amen, sister. Well, very, so much encouraging, wonderful words from all. I, um, the last thing you said, Renee, about understanding people's suffering, I've gone through the same thing. I, I did not have empathy for hurting people, uh, old people, sick people, until I got old and sick. And a lot of times in the hospital, certain surgeries and issues like that. And that's, that's how I learned. Yep. So uh, I, I guess I should thank the Lord for, for those things because uh, it, it is, it's actually helped me. Uh, okay. Well, um, brother Luke, the if there's still, if there's still anybody in the chat, can you drop uh first Peter one seven for them to write down and to read over? I don't have it in front of me, but could you go ahead and say what it is? And let's, oh, if, let's... if, well, if anybody in the chat is listening, just write down First Peter chapter one verse seven, and it will explain a lot. Okay, let me let me post it there. Uh, I don't even know what it. Oh, I know what I think. Oh. I know what it says, but it just I just get scriptures that come to my mind, and and they end up being exactly what we need to hear. <laughs> one Peter, what? First Peter chapter one verse seven. One. I got it if you want me to read it. Yeah, go ahead. Please do. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. The trial of your faith much more precious than gold, although it be tried with fire. Yeah. Now, I, I know that it's controversial that, that some in the congregation um, uh, question that we could have any crisis of, of faith, but people do, especially when you're going through very, very difficult times. And uh, so I think that verse is, uh, we should all understand that. And 
Uh, thank you, uh, Brother Dave, for contacting me uh, today and urging me on uh, so that we had this program tonight. And so I look forward to next time, uh, and that'll be tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Time, the Church of the Eternally Secure Sunday broadcast. Uh, please, everybody, everybody join us. And tomorrow's the first Sunday of the month, so get your wine and bread ready. We'll have communion together. Thank you, everybody. Love you all. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus.